Hello, hello, hello. Oh my god. Would you look at that? It's another week of the All Things Protoss Team League season number three. Holy schnizers. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. I hope everyone's having a wonderful time. A wonderful day. Because we're going to be getting into some excellent action here. For the first game of week number five. The final week of the regular season. It's going to be super sick. It is going to be super sick. I am very much excited. Um, Bull, you're doing the second match, by the way. Not the first match. I had to double check with that uh, bait there you gave me in the in the Twitch chat. Uh, but anyways, yes, we are going to be going into our first game in a little bit. But before we do that, I'm going to be running down a little bit of what happened last week. So uh, if you don't want spoilers, then look away and close your ears. Excellent. <clears throat> All right, so last week we had some interesting developments where we saw, unfortunately, Frogify uh, kind of dumpstering my team, which is uh, not great for us, obviously, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, not exactly the match that we wanted, but that's okay. Anyways, uh, Banana, the Itty Bitty Banana Committee, was able to defeat the Rottweilers as well, which unfortunately... Fortunately means that they are now officially the first team out of the regular season. They will be parting us. However, we will still be seeing one more of their matches uh, tomorrow to make sure that we still get some equal representation on the main stream. So we will be still seeing their final goodbye match. But unfortunately, they have been eliminated from the season as of last week. Uh, and also the Supply Block Heroes also barely edged out Corsair Blue Wings, which interestingly actually was a New Horizons versus Mag Ace match. Very interesting. I didn't actually quite catch that match on the side stream. So that's actually pretty cool that it ended up being a both not, uh, both, you know, not captains playing. Also, New Horizons beating Mag. Hold up. That's kind of insane as well, isn't it? Isn't New Horizons pool two? Did Mac have to off race? And but it still says Terran. What happened with that? What, is that? Did anyone see that? That's actually pretty crazy. Mag just had a moment. <laughs> That's kind of wild. Oh wow. Well, good job, New Horizons. DT drop. That's so based. That's sick. That's super. That's super sick. Very nice. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that was on the B, uh, B group, group B, whatever, and then on group A, we had Goblins Bizarre Adventure, Dumpstring the Kitty Cabal, which was, uh, very one-sided, actually, to watch on stream. Uh, and then May the Forge Be With You was able to take out the Goobers as well, which unfortunately ended their, or continues to end their resurgence run after winning, uh, one, actually, wait a minute, never mind. I forgot that they, I, I forgot that I was so fucking gaslit by all the players in the Goobers thinking that this is like the ret actual return of the Goobers and they're actually striking back. But that was all the way back in week one and they literally haven't won since then. So never mind. Uh, so yes, the Goobers continuing to be shit and losing to May the Forge Be With You. And then we had the United States of Protoss also barely winning out versus the low-skill apologists as well, which was a, apparently a pretty crazy match as well. I didn't quite get to the VOD, but I heard this one was also pretty epic. So that was what happened last week, and these are the overall standings. As of right now, we still have got some great matches to come, and there's a lot of different places these different teams could place overall at the end of this week, which will then determine who goes into the decider matches. Uh, to then qualify for the playoffs, which will be super sick. I will also note as well here that 
uh, I'm making my the official announcement that the deciders matches and playoffs will be delayed by one week. They're basically just going to get pushed back one week uh, because on this weekend of the August 3rd and 4th, uh, there is going to be the Tasteless Stormgate Showdown in Korea. Uh, and before... Uh, and that was... The, the dates for that were determined after I figured out the whole schedule for the All Things Brothers Team League, so... Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to actually say that or not, but it's taking them so long to actually release the, the, the caster announcement that I kind of have to just mention it so that way you guys know. So, yeah. Spoiler, I'm going to be there. <clears throat> and that means ATL is going to be delayed and pushed back one week. So, that is going to be the updated uh, schedule for that, but, you know, not too much going to be going on with that. Not too much affected, honestly. It just gives everyone a little bit of extra time to get their shit organized for the second half of the ATL season. So, that'll still be pretty cool. But, regardless, we are going to be continuing on into our first match today. And joining me to introduce the teams here is going to be two wonderful people that I have here on the desk. It is going to be Takua coming in for his first appearance on the analyst desk here for the ATL Season 3. And a return of Guitar King. Hello. Welcome, everybody. How are you guys here? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are we doing, ATL? Excellent, excellent. Very good, now, Takwa. Thank you very much. Uh, you might want to peep the stream for a moment if you want to take a look at the analyst. <laughs> That's quite <laughs> nice. But uh, anyways, Guitar King. So God damn. Do you know I so woke up at 7 a.m.? I woke up early for this, so I'm so happy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure Smurfs have a good sleep schedule. Oh, I'm sure they do. Yes, definitely. They definitely go to bed nice and feeling nice and good, getting all those ladder points. Yeah. Uh, Guitar King, guy, this is going to be your match. Well, you're not playing, but your team is going to be playing. Uh, so yeah, actually just a quick uh, quick aside as well I was originally not going to be casting this match I know I've casted a lot of frogify on the main stream and I was uh, I did have it actually set up very perfectly where all of the teams that uh, Had the least amount of matches streamed on my stream were going to be streamed this week, but unfortunately uh, some scheduling issue for the um, Which match was that was that's the Which one was it? Uh, I can't remember. One of the other matches <laughs> I was going to stream. Oh, yeah, it was the Sp Spazy versus nice. Mishnek one. I was going to mm. cast that one, but uh, unfortunately, some scheduling issue. One of the matches couldn't be played as both players were not available today. So, unfortunately, not able to do that. So, sorry to them, but uh, it is what it is. So, yes, instead, we got Frogify versus Corsair. So, that is that. Anyways, Guitar King, yeah. what do you think is uh, going to be going on here in your wonderful match? Obviously, you might know the results, but uh, speak without spoilers. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, just just to be clear, I didn't sign up just to cast my own team. I signed up before the switch happened. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I've been working uh, a lot with my team. I, I was... You know, I said to everyone that this match is very important for the frogs, and uh, I helped them prepare as, as best I could. So, uh, I'm hoping for a banger series, you know, I I think the frogs are punching up here, but... Uh, yeah, going into this week, I was hopeful that, that I could, you know, I could work with my teammates and, and, and cook up something real good. So that, that was sort of the, the impression going into this. Yeah, I mean it's extremely important here because we're now in the final seat or the final week of the regular season, and the winner of this match, provided that my team Raptors uh, Rainers Raptors loses this match uh, this week, which they won't. If they do, then the winner of this mm. match will all I'm pretty sure qualify right into the deciders match, assuming that the map scores are not uh, in certain ways. So basically, if the winner of this match will. Uh, very uh, heighten their chances very much if they win if they lose essentially they are out is what my understanding is is that right yeah essentially so uh <laughs> the winning team depending on the score needs to needs uh rainers raptors to lose like 4-2 or 5-1 essentially or 6-0 of course yes so yes. so even yeah. if my so even basically if 
even if my team gets to the ace match, it doesn't matter for this for this uh, for this match. Yeah, essentially, if 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 Rainer, if uh, if DJ manages to DJ's team manages to win, then this match doesn't matter. But it is still very important for yes. both of us to have a chance, essentially. Of course. Thank you, Dine Common, for the gift to uh, NPS Craze. I don't know who that is, but thank you. Bucks, and let's welcome. go. Uh, anyways, Takwa, hello and welcome again. Uh, how are you feeling about the uh, the match that we have got going on today? What, what are you expecting? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears to be pool two, three, and four today. So I do want to point that yep. out. That is correct. I think that's going to maximize our entertainment value today. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. I was just and and to the do... stress levels. And the stress levels. <laughs> <laughs> It's Saturday. I don't have time for stress. It's going to be great. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm feeling good. So I'm like really, really conflicted, right? Oh, wait, never mind. I was like, I was really conflicted about how I felt, but I thought Ardent was playing today. I was like, well, I'm going to go against Ardent, no. obviously, but no. Yeah, I was. Uh, no, actually, Frog no, of Fire Rebellion won there. last week, but Corsair didn't. I don't know. I think Frogify is going to find a way to find to win today. Yeah, perhaps they could. They've the been wind. on a nice streak ever since last week, uh, which is which is always good. But um, I don't know. Some of the matches could be a bit tricky here. I mean, the first one is going to be Mars Bar versus Heroku. And uh, Mars obviously had a bit of a tough time last time. But to be fair, he did. Actually, this was two weeks ago. I'm, I'm thinking of the highlight video, which is technically one, like, yeah. one week delayed. But the, uh, the the cannon rushes versus Zeno, the, at least he won the second game. But the first game definitely did look rough. So perhaps a little vulnerable to the cheeses. And Heroku is definitely one to do that as well. So, uh, Taco, what are you expecting in our Mars Bar versus Heroku series first up? Heroku and I were teammates uh, once upon a time. And yeah, I got to know Heroku. And he's a... He's very, very tricky. So I'm, especially this week where everything is on the line and it matters, I'm expecting uh, some real nonsense from Haraku. Classic him. True. What do you, do you have a score prediction for it? Hmm. I still think it might be like 1-1 one, one, though, somewhere in there. So I'm going to do a 1-1 one, one here. Okay, sure. Tarking, what do you think? So, yeah... Uh, Mars being the Giga Chad he is, uh, he knew that Heroku is a is a tricky boy, uh, so he said uh, that he is going to do his best and just open very safe. Uh, so that was his game plan to just de deflect like a fly everything that uh, that Heroku tries to throw at him and make him look absolutely just like a kid, you know. Poof, and Mars is just. Standing in there, flexing his giant biceps. Standing on top of the French. Nice. He's going to blind so him yeah. with his beautiful bald head. Exactly. Uh, just just the reflection of the dome. Just... <laughs> exactly. <Boom>! Yes. So, <laughs> thank you for the, the sound effects, everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, of course, obviously, Guitar King wants it to be a 2-0 because this is his team, so his predictions don't matter. Uh, so, yes, thank you, guys, and we will be back with you after the first series, and we'll see what you guys think. And we are going to be going into that first series uh, today, which is going to be Frogify, Ribitalium going against Corsair Blue Wings. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started.
Welcome everybody to the first match of the day, and I forgot to put the music on, that's okay. Spawning on the bottom right hand side of the map of Golden Aura for the Frogify Rib Battalion. The best candy bar ever to be named, and I would love to have a bite of his name right now. It is Mars Bar. And on the top left hand side, voted the most boring player in the All Things Protoss Team League. However, Spazy Mazy just recently won up to him last week when he did the exact same Ling Flood. Two games in a row, winning at exactly the same time, essentially both games, and it was extremely unentertaining. This is Heroku. That was an uncomfortable intro. What was uncomfortable about that? There's nothing uncomfortable about wanting to have a bite of Tom's name. Wow, nobody voted for Corsair to win. And I... Wow, that's boring. You guys suck at predictions. No one even... You, you guys, like, ask for the predictions and then no one fucking predicts. You guys are boring as hell. Jesus Christ. You put 10 on it? Jesus, shut up, bull. That's that's basically worse than not voting. Alright, Mars went for a slightly earlier pool than Heroku did, and doesn't have gas either, so this doesn't look like it's gonna work at all. I don't really know what this is supposed to do, other than scare Heroku. Um, and yeah, that's obviously great. Wait, sorry. I was distracted by chat. Okay, anyways. Uh, yeah, this is going to be pretty fine for Heroku, I feel like. I mean, they're going to have a higher drone count. They're going to have gas income. They're going to have enough lings and some queens out to defend against this. So, I don't really think these early lings are going to be doing anything here from Mars, unless Heroku was actually so unprepared. There we go. Okay, I was going to say, as long as they just regroup with the queens, we should be all good. Double queen actually killing off the overlord in the front, though. That's actually pretty nice. He's going to supply block Heroku here, but unfortunately, Mars Bar is also supply blocked on his own accord. So, that means they're both supply blocked and nothing's happening right now. So, that's not great. But because of that supply block, that will also deny Heroku the chance of getting a higher drone count here, as now they are down quite a few, getting a couple extra losses, of course, making the Roach, Warren, and Evo Chamber. But we're also uh, going straight up to Lair here as Heroku, which is an interesting choice. I wonder if it's going to be some sort of fast Nidus play, or if it's going to be some super early Roach speed all-in kind of a thing, like uh, we saw Ibari doing... And a bunch of the other Zergs actually doing a lot in this uh, in this team league. Mars only just now getting any gases after his Roach Warren and Evo Chamber. So once those two buildings complete, he'll be very happy to know that he doesn't have any gas available to actually do anything with them. Because these gases are literally so fucking late. But did we get a scout off there? Oh, we did actually see the lair, though, so that's actually quite nice out of Mars. A very nice scout. Obviously, that's not something you usually expect to actually get a scout on, considering the fact that the lair is usually made in the main base, and usually when there's a wall here, there's units plugged in the wall to make sure that the lings can't actually get in to see anything. So, a pretty big mistake, I feel like, from Heroku to let that get scouted. It's a good amount of information to be given over to Mars here, and... Mars is now seeing the uh, result of my uh, of his problems here, where he has all of this shit set up, but he doesn't have any fucking gas to use it. Has to now use his first 100 gas on the plus one carapace upgrade, and nothing else. We've got no speed for lings. We got no speed for roaches. We have no plus one attack here. We're also getting the extra gases at the natural here to pa uh, to to try and catch up in the gas income because we've been just so fucking lacking on that. 
even getting a proxy or a, a macro hatch as well I should say and uh, yeah I don't know this just doesn't really feel that good for Mars because Heroka is the one that's going to be going straight into the plus one and the roach speed and getting a lot of roaches out nice and quickly here and we'll probably just be kind of sending them across the map I'd imagine and if we don't have any of the same type of upgrades from Mars in a mirror matchup, it is going to be a very difficult situation for him to hold on to anything here. And he kind of knows that by going for these spine crawlers defensively. Heroku also going to be getting in here with the Overseer to get a nice scout. We'll see just how late this lair is from Mars. And that is going to be a, a nice little indicator of exactly where Mars's tech situation is at. As uh, it's showing how little that he will actually have. And that, that uh, Heroku has been ahead in that game for uh, basically the whole time, basically. Huge swell of lings out of Mars uh, because... Uh, I, I don't know exactly. Oh my god, it's because he's going Spire instead. Holy shit, this was all a bait. This was all a bait. The Roach Warren and everything was a bait. He's getting plus one, plus one. He's getting melee upgrades for the Lings as well. And this was all just a massive jabait. And that's why the Spine Crawlers are here as well, I suppose, to keep him alive. But unfortunately, there is a Changeling dropping in the corner of his base, which, unfortunately for Heroku, hasn't actually been remembered yet. So once Heroku does remember that that exists, we could get a very easy scout on this Spire. But... Before that could happen, Mars is trying to run in with a bunch of lings. I don't necessarily agree with this because, uh, well, actually, he's getting quite a lot of like surface area here. Never mind. He's actually going to totally roast these up. He's the plus one character, or plus one armor. I can't talk. Plus one attack is finished. So that means this is actually going to do a lot of damage, and it's actually going to be able to kill the third base as well. We still have not scouted that the Spire is on the way, and we're gonna just literally loot. we just completely forgot that we even dropped this. We've completely forgotten that we did this, and now we have no idea what's happening. We have a grand total of two queens on the map as our anti-air with 10 mutas on the way from Mars Bar. This is looking extremely good for him. I can't even imagine a situation where Mars Bar can possibly lose this game. This is actually wild that this has happened in this way. I'm, I'm very surprised that Heroku... I mean... I don't even know. Look, it's like, he saw that the lair was so late. So there's no... <gasps> Mars, no! Just go! Just go! Don't attack things! Go! Go right across the map! Oh my god, he gave too much awareness. Although, does Heroku even realize what's happening? He's only making two queens and no spores. He's getting a Nidusworm. He's getting a Hydrogen. We need... Spore crawlers, Heroku. We have no anti-air right now. Mars, stop killing overlords and go attack the fucking base. There's zero things to kill you right now. Finally, spores are getting placed down in a frantic uh, attempt to possibly deny everything. Heroku, or sorry, Mars Bar is getting so distracted. He's like a fucking dog on the sidewalk looking at every single squirrel he sees. Just killing every overlord instead of just gunning it for the main, which now means that the spore is going to finish and limit his oppor his opportunities to get as much damage as possible, but still will be able to do a decent amount of that. Killing off the knight is over. If he could find the other- Oh my god, he could trap all of the units. He could kill all the units. Oh my god, he did! Oh my god, he killed everything! There was everything inside. Oh my god, all 36 roaches die at the same time. Oh my god, yes! It's so rare that you ever actually see that happen in the game of StarCraft. That's absolutely insane. He did it, the mad lad. Oh my god. Hello, highlight video. Good lord, Mars Bar. Just dumpstering Heroku in this first game. The Hydras come on out, but right into a giant swell of things and too many mutas. That is going to be a GG from Mars Bar getting the first win. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Seeing everything die in a night has got to be one of the most satisfying things I can even think of. You, you never see that. Oh my god. You almost never see that actually happen. That's wild. Oh my goodness. That was sick.
Thank you, Diane, for giving the the waffles. All right, we're going to be getting into game number two here. Game number two. Mm. And on the uh, top left side of the map. With the most decisive moment of the game, even though he took forever to actually get into the main base, he once he did, he finally found the actual damage he needed, which is not the damage we expected. We expected a lot of drones and queens falling, but instead, somehow, about 30 roaches all died at the same time, and that was absolutely incredible. It is Mars Bar. And on the bottom right hand side, playing from the land of baguettes and smoking cigarettes before 10 a.m. It is the Blue Zerg for the Corsair, Blue Wings, Heroku. Mars Bar, uh, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say Mars Bar correcting his mistake of last game of forgetting to mine any gas before the four minute mark and gonna be getting that nice and early, but it was just a prank. It was just a little prank. We'll be yet again going for that gasless opener for now. Whereas Heroku, getting the gas nice and early yet again. We'll see if they try to go for something a little bit more aggressive this time. Heroku is someone that I expect to do something that's uh, a little bit more in your face. We haven't really seen much of the Macro Meister Heroku this season compared to last. We did see that one mech game versus your bro Chris, but I am very used to seeing a lot of Ling all ins and other Shiningas out of Heroku here, so uh, I am more so looking to that as a, the possibilities of what we're going into here. Another early flood of Lings out of Mars Bar here, which again I feel like should do next to nothing and is only really put him behind in drones. I'm not really sure why he keeps going for these early Lings, because they don't really do anything. As there's enough Lings from Heroku out to deny them, and then without the Queen even needing to spawn, we actually uh, force them out, so... Yeah. I feel like that's just a, a lot of drones that Mars Bar could just be ahead right now, but is instead just going to be behind. Thankfully, has gone for the gas earlier this time, though, so we'll still have some gas income coming in, so that's very nice. We definitely needed that the last game. And this is going to be a switch up. We got the Baneling Nest coming in for Heroku with the Roach Warren coming in for Mars. So a potential avenue of attack here for Heroku if they decide to go for it. I see no Evo Chamber with this nest, and there is the Flood of Lings to accompany it. And so this is going to be some hardcore aggression coming out of Heroku to cancel a potential third base or potentially even end the game if Mars Bar gives him the opportunity here. So he's going to be needing to get out enough of his own roaches to be able to deny this Ling Bane attack. A nice scouting lane coming in here for Mars Bar. We'll be able to see the big Ling, sw uh, Ling Swell and the Bane Ling Nest finished here. So what is his response? It is to immediately wall off at the front without a third base even starting here. This actually is going to look pretty decent here for Mars, I feel like. Because it's going to take a lot of Banelings to actually bust through this wall here. And there's going to be just a bunch of Roaches and Queens behind it. So, I like what Heroku's doing behind this, which is immediately droning. Because that's going to allow, uh, allow him to instantly recoup from this failed aggression. Which, in, in, to an extent, isn't exactly failed. It's obviously get, losing some resources with those uh, extra buildings. But... Oh, I, I, uh, I don't know about this. 
Uh, but it does at least force Mars Bar into staying onto two bases here while we already have a third base of our own. So that is obviously going to look very nice for Heroku going into the later stages of this game. Even though their tech is late with Roach Warren and Evo Chamber only just now getting placed, it is at least going to be giving us a better economy, a much better economy at that as we're up 11 drones at the moment. But Mars Bar realizing the situation saying no fuck that i'm gonna cancel and that plus one and kill it instead and then continue to rewall ourselves in because there's a bunch of links trying to get back in we're just gonna let a few roaches out on the map and then uh continue to sit back at home and we'll see how this goes for him because unfortunately he's supply blocked as well so he won't be able to get very many reinforcements and the army count is actually favoring mars unfortunately though is going to get surrounded by all of the lings coming out so uh yeah, never mind. This is going terribly. If all these roaches were together, then maybe we would be in a nice spot here. But... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's not great. That is not very great for Mars Bar, I'm not going to lie to you. Unfortunately, kind of streamlining all those roaches in one at a time does not uh, end up doing too well for him. You want to have all those roaches together in a big ball that can get grouped up and, uh, you know, kind of tucked away in a nice corner or something to limit the surface area and then make it so that the ranged attacks can kill off all those melee units. But unfortunately, not getting that done. And now he's just kind of stuck here on two bases with only 32 drones and has got really no other option other than just continuing to mass up a large army and hope that he can go for another random attack slightly later and uh, still end up winning the game. But Heroku is going to be on three bases for quite a while at this point, which means their economy is going to be really pumping out just a lot of units. More than any two base player would hope to dream to be able to make at this time. And so, even though Mars is going full on all in with this attack, their army supply is basically like 10 armies, it's like 12 supply behind. To be fair, a lot of that is Lings for Heroku. So, if a couple Baneling shots could just land on top of that big cluster of Lings, then this could swing extremely heavily. But Mars Bar is instead deciding to back up because he doesn't actually have speed finished yet for his Zerglings. But I don't know if that's the reason he's even backing up in the first place. It's not like he has a lot of links anyways. I'm actually not really sure what he's doing. His lair is finished and he's not even researching Roach speed or anything. So I'm not really sure. What the fuck is this thing doing here? So I'm not really quite sure what the plan here is for Mars, as he's actually going to just instead expand. Uh, okay. Well, we're choosing probably the worst of all options out of Mars. <laughs> okay, never mind, we are attacking. Oh, never mind, no we're not. I don't think I've ever seen someone be so indecisive in my life. All right, well, these lings are going to get split up nice and well. Uh, well never mind, they're not going to get split up nice and well because they just get di uh, immediately blown up by a main ling. But these ones are going to do a decent amount of damage in the main base. The roaches over here on the other side are going to try to kill off a fourth base, but there's more roaches from Heroku than there are basically any units from Mars Bar. So that is not going to do very well. Heroku is tryharding their heart out to keep these lings alive in the main base when it literally doesn't even matter he could have just a moved all these roaches and denied his fourth from dying with his much higher roach count but in, you know in his mind prioritizing four lings staying alive inside of a main base versus two banelings was apparently more important regardless we're going to be sending these set of roaches over to the left side to cancel this base over here which should go down without much of a fight with all of these roaches so out of position and roach speed not even close to finishing here. And I feel like Heroku is just uh, dotting their T's and crossing their I's, as they do like to say. To make sure that they can just win this game in a nice, comfortable macro fashion.
Did Noah notice I said the analogy wrong? I was kind of waiting for someone to pick up that I said it wrong, but no one, no one even noticed. I face when you try to act like an idiot for content and then no one even notices that you acted like an idiot in the first place. Alright, well finally, Heroku's gonna walk on up, throw out some vials. And, uh, I mean, going up a little ramp like this is honestly a little annoying and quite difficult, but I think it should allow Heroku to eventually get on up here. Or we're just gonna sit here and just shoot this with Biles for 20 minutes. Oh my god, Mars Bar just shot him self with Biles, and that is going to be that, a 1-1 situation in the first match. Heroku getting a nice equalizing score there, so Takawa will be correct in their prediction. Very nicely done by him. Uh, but yes, uh, a nice opener from Mars in the first game, but unfortunately not finding the same luck in the second one. Uh, so yeah, nicely done there from Heroku to even and on up. And we'll be going over back to the analyst desk to talk to them about what happened as well. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Takwa, you were correct in your prediction. Congratulations. Your debut on the desk, and you're already perfect in your predictions, unlike a certain analyst, uh, a.k.a. November. And so how does it feel to currently be the best perfect match predictor of the whole season right now uh i actually have to go right now but it was great being here thanks i'm Wait, just gonna end on a damn. perfect note no i'm kidding i was no, about to say amazing. i was <laughs> not, am oh i getting God. trolled this is like already the most cursed week of atl and now it's like okay thank okay anyways no, no i'm, I, I'm I, glad I, i'm i am genuinely glad i woke up early as shit just to be here wonderful it's been fun excellent um yeah any any comments about the the match there takua <clears throat> So Mars Bar seemed to bring more of the tricky in game one, really both games. But Haru's was just really clean. But then he just plays defensive, and like you pointed out, a bunch of mutas show up. And then in game two, I don't know, Haru just kind of built a bunch of drones and then won. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose so. Uh, a bit <laughs> of an unfortunate scenario in the second game for sure, but yeah you know whatever uh guitar king uh, you must be at least happy with a one map score there from mars i'd say yeah for sure uh i i was glad that mars was able to take a game and uh the the knight is getting killed was absolutely top notch <laughs> uh i i think at least mentally he has the victory you know he sure. he 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 oil he oiled the dome and shown it at Heroku, but Heroku put on sunglasses the second game, so unfortunately it didn't work a second time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, Mars just, uh, he kind of opened very safe, but because he opened very safe, he didn't have a lot of eco, and I guess had just uh, more units, and he kind of became the aggressor because he was expecting Heroku to do something even cheesier than what uh, he was opening, so it kind of turned on its head in that sense but uh at least he was able to just uh link flood game one and uh you know get the mutas on a on a dog chase essentially yeah you know, those mutas ha ha had the dog in them <laughs> they were just killing overlords left and right when heroku was still 50 supply over supply cap yeah uh, supply block <laughs> the most useless so, um, overlord kills of all time <laughs> yeah and the classic uh Hy hydra den and infester uh, infestation pit defense uh, plus the nidus. I yeah. love that one. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, of course, uh, knowing uh, the the statistics, Lorimbo will show up now just as the ZVZ is over. <laughs> so really? uh, maybe we will see him in chat. But uh, yeah, this 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 series was just a uh, pool three ZVZ with a. With a nice knight of skill, I think it, it was kind of nice. Of course, uh, I would have liked for Mars to win both games. We did everything in the world, so absolutely not. If we did, then you would also be six K. So we'll be sitting True. now, going into the next game, which is going to be a Frogos versus I'm Data, uh, a PVT for the ages, I'm sure. 
will be interesting to see what happens here. Taco, any predictions of what you might be expecting in this next PVT? Wow. Uh, I also know Frogos pretty well, and I think we all know what to expect from Frogos here. He's going to build Reapers, and he might win somehow, because he always does that. I'm predicting another 1-1, one, one, though. Very, uh, very low test, but, you know, it might get you the, the percentages that you want, so that's totally fine. Uh, uh, it's kind of interesting, though, because Frogos, we have seen him on the main stage here, and surprisingly few reapers being made by him overall so it feels like he's maybe uh grown out of his ways but that might also be the result of why he's in such a low pool this time around <laughs> uh guitar king yeah. what, what, are you, what are you thinking here so uh frogos wasn't exactly too confident going into this but uh we, we tried to cook something up something nasty uh i don't know how the games went uh, I, I just know the score, I, but I don't know what Frogos chose. So uh, he, I am expecting something very nasty from Frogos, but it not involving Reapers, because he thinks t Reapers in TVP are not strong. So he oh. only does them in the other matchups. So, so yeah. I see. But, uh, but yeah, it depends how well Data can defend. Uh, and again, it was feeling like... Uh, you know, Frogos is trying to punch up uh, because Data, I think, uh, is currently maybe higher MMR than Frogos. Although I'm not sure, I didn't exactly look at what Frogos' MMR is currently. But Data, I remember being around like 4.7, 4.8, something like that. Uh, maybe with jumps higher. So uh, I think it's going to be Frogos as the underdog, but I believe in the frogs. As always, so. Nice. Think it may be a 1-1? One, one? Uh, I mean... What am I talking I about? You know, your prediction means literally unimportant. It's the most unimportant prediction. Exactly. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, we're going to go to the next match here, of course, as we have Frogos going against I'm Data. Coming up next, surely going to be a banger. I'm very excited to see this because it's going to have Protoss players in it and not zerg players which is so important and so super cool and based so here we go in to our first protoss game of the day as this is the only reason i'm even here so we have spawning on the bottom left hand side of the map that one protoss player himself the one particularly that seems to hate making the best defensive structure that the Protoss even owns. And it's very interesting to see. Maybe he'll do that again this time and then end up losing because Frogos apparently has something super cooked in the kitchen ready for him. It is. I'm Data. Oh, he's also French. Ew. Top right. Playing for the Frog Viper Battalion. It is the man that used to go Reapers every single game but has since been reborn and doesn't do that anymore. But unfortunately now is losing a lot of games. It is Frogos. I'm data admitting that he's afraid of his own kind. Understandable. What? Oh. I was like, where the fuck is this eBay being made? <laughs> okay, an eBay block out of Frogos, pretty cringe, but yeah, I guess that makes some sense here. Uh, I'm data going for a cyber before Nexus means he won't be down. Excuse me, won't be down here very early to notice, but actually, super cool. He's one of the few players that actually does their due diligence and makes that zealot before coming down, just in case they're getting eBay blocked. So that's kind of cool, but. Um, wait, what? Wait, what? Why are we? What? Why are we taking the third base anyway? I thought the whole point of getting the zealot, the whole point of getting the zealot first is like so that way we can just kill this nice and early so then we. Don't have to do this. What? Um, alright. 
interesting. We're also getting the second pylon in the main base here, which is interesting, which is going to help us hide our tech very well. But that also then means they're not going to have a battery. Ah, what am I kidding? He's not going to make a battery anyways. Frogos, on the other hand, is going to be going for the reactor on the factory, which will be a double cyclone opener. Ooh. Yeah, this is going to be a bit rough, I feel like. Uh, from I'm Data to be able to defend against this as he's only got a single stalker out of the map. Where'd the Zealot go? Oh, he's got a probe actually kind of hidden away. That's kind of cheeky. I wonder if that's going to do anything. So that's going to send be sent out to scout. So that's immediately going to die to the Cyclones whenever they do meet. So that's basically a non-factor. It's going to be a single stalker to defend against reactored Cyclones at this forward natural here. Oh my god, oh, you're right. You can put a shield battery down here from this pylon. I didn't even think about that. It's actually kind of cute. Uh, but he made a pylon out here anyway. And also getting the robo nice and forward as well. While going for... Oh, a dark shrine. That's actually super based. But unfortunately, again, he's got no units. And more importantly... Oh my god, he actually made one! Holy shit! I think this is the first time I've ever seen him make a shield battery in the whole season. Unfortunately, it's late as all living fuck, so he's still gonna die. Uh, yeah. I think... I mean, I'm Data's just dead. <laughs> I'm Data's just dead. There's no way he wins this game. I mean, DTs are cool and all, but... We're not even gonna have a prism to send them across the map. I, I'm just so convinced. I literally, I don't, uh, I don't get it. I actually don't understand why people try to do the third. Like they're trying, they, why are they being so cutesy? Like they see a pro player do the thing where they make the third at the different spot. And they're like, oh, I should do that too. That's so smart. I'm going to do that. I'm like really smart. I saw the pro player do it. But it's like so, it's like, it's so unnecessary. Just, just pull a few probes, use the zealot, kill the, kill the eBay. Make your pylon and gas, and then expand a little bit later. It'll be fine. You'll, you're basically even. It's, it's okay. You don't need to do this. It just makes this happen. You just die. You, you just die. What is this scan on the high ground? That's wild. He doesn't actually see the dark shrine with this. He doesn't see the dark templar either. Oh, oh, never mind. Okay. Is there a scan left? Oh my god, there's no scans actually right now. This 1DT is going to hold him off for now, actually. Somehow, there's still a uh, probe advantage for I'm Data, given all this. But there we go. There's the scan. Just waiting for that. Uh, there's another DT that got a... Oh, my God. He's got a proxy pylon with a gateway as well. Hold up. All right. Hold up. No. There's going to... I mean, there's another scan. We, we have no natural. Like... <laughs> Like, no, there's no way. There's literally no way. Where'd the DT go? Is he hiding it? He brought it back. Wait, did it die? Yeah, no, this is the same one. Okay. No, there's no way. There's literally no way. It's impossible. There's absolutely no way Frogos loses this game. Not a shot. I don't really like bringing that extra DT in. Didn't we just... that? This was the CC that we saw that had the, the energy. Why did we do that? What? <laughs> that was insane by data. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Alright. Where's that robo? Here it is. I'm actually amazed that I'm data is ahead in this... In head... Uh, in... And the, oh my god. I can't believe I'm Data is ahead in probes after all that. Jesus Christ, that was hard. What the fuck? God, do I get paid to fucking do this as my semi job? Holy shit. What, what has Tasteless been doing hiring me to cast shit with him this whole time? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Okay, no one send this to Tasteless, my god. Holy Jesus Christ. All right. 
We're going into Blink. We've got a Forge coming up. We got Immortals. I mean, we're still ahead in pros, which is insane. But what the fuck? Look at this army, dude. How are you going to kill all of this? Especially... Oh, wait, he does have a battery. He did it again. He made one. Guys, he's learning. He's going to need more than that, though. DT died in the main base to something, I think. But he's going to... Or maybe it died in the natural. Because he's now dropping two in the main. Which is undefended. Except for the turret. But it's not like they can actually shoot at the DT. So that's quite nice. But there's lots... I lied. There's only one thing of energy. Oh, but there's a raven. Okay. This is insane, by the way. What the fuck is this attack? It's a bunch of random stim marines, a shit ton of cyclones, and SCVs. And it's and they're being funneled in the worst way ever. We're losing all of our SCVs at home as well. This immortal isn't dead yet. We've got a battery in the main with overcharge. Surely no. There's no way. There is no way that Frogos is losing this game. There's no way. It's impossible. There's no fucking shot that he loses this game. We- oh god. Oh, I was gonna say, we lift up- oh, thank god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was about to say, god, we actually got the lift up on the stalkers to save them, but then it just- the prism just gets yeeted out of the sky. All right, thank God. Holy shit, I can't believe that. That would have been the funniest fucking highlight clip of all time, though, if that ended up being a win for I'm Data. But for thank God for Frogos and, and, the, and the, the Frog's sake that he actually was able to close that out because that was way too close than it needed to be. Gemini say itty bitty banana committee right now. Yeah, that's right. I will always get that, I right? Itty bitty banana committee, itty bitty banana committee, itty bitty banana committee. Yeah, you try doing that. Oh, I'm back, boys. I'm so back. All right. Here we go. On the bottom right hand side, going for a build that honestly would have ended up doing really well if we just didn't fucking take a third base for our natural. It is learning to make shield batteries for once in its life. I'm Data. And on the top left hand side, going for an absolutely disgusting build last game. And looking like he's gonna do something similar this time as well. It is. For the Frogify Rivetalion, one of the frogs with the name frog in his name, it is Frogos. It's kind of interesting that we call him Frogos when he is named after a frog. Why don't we call him Frogos? Anyone listening to me? What's going on here, all right? Right, we got a single proxy barracks coming out with one at home as well. Now, this is interesting. Can we get the supply block in time? No, we cannot. The probe will be let in. We will see the double gas and a striking lack of SCVs. This is very interesting. I feel like I'm data sh Dude, imagine. Oh, just imagine if he was paying attention with that probe. Oh! Dude, imagine getting a pylon block on that. Oh, that would have felt so good. Oh, that would have felt amazing. All right, there's the proxied tech lab. It's going to be some marauders with some marines coming out from the main base. This is dirty. This is absolute dirt coming out of Frogos. Surely he should be able to notice that this orbital is so fucking late that there's got to be something else happening on the map. He's also not seen a factory made yet in his base. He's searching vigorously for this and has not found it. It's getting a shield battery. I love it. I'm data slowly showing that he's actually learned from his past woes, scouting around a little bit here and there for something with one of the probes, but unfortunately not enough. Oh, it is full on Reapers. Oh shit, it's just literally gonna be a Reaper. So Frogo is apparently saying that Reapers are shit versus Protoss, but goes for them anyways. We are back to 
the Frogos original spicy sauce. Oh, you could have attacked like that. What? Why didn't you go the other way? Okay, whatever. I don't think you would have killed it anyway. Wait, what the fuck? Why has he got a tech lab on this? Wait, what? <laughs> Why did he make a tech lab? What? Why is there a tech lab on this reaper? You don't need a tech lab to make fucking reapers? What the fuck? Alright, well, they're gonna try to walk in the front here and bounce these stalkers around and give them a fun time. And Well, they are having quite a fun time by killing all the reapers by doing almost nothing. So that's gonna go very nicely for I'm Data. And Frogos, realizing why he never goes reapers versus Protoss anymore, because, yes, they are actually very shit. And we are going to research Stim off of this proxy tech lab. Because surely this won't get scouted. Or found out. Surely not. As we do have a proxied gateway coming out for I'm Data to go for a big blink stalker attack as well. Before a robo and prism would be done. Imagine if he didn't Reaper Wall, though. Yeah, no, imagine if he didn't do the thing that almost every Protoss does on almost every map. Then he definitely would have been cooking here. I agree. That, that's so true, Waffles. Uh, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This is this is just not looking great. I'll be honest. I I really think this is looking quite bad for the frogs. If I do have to say so myself, there's going to be a lot of blink stalkers hitting the field. There's already a lot of blink stalkers that have hit the field, and we're going to find the stim before it finishes because this is greedy as all fucking shit. I like that we're actually splitting up the stalkers from data to make sure we don't overcommit here and get surrounded, but we're actually going to get surrounded anyways because the other stalkers are, instead of defending the first group of stalkers, simply going to walk across the map, and I don't necessarily agree with that because we could have just canceled stim for free, uh, but instead we're going to not do that, and I feel like whenever we have a chance to cancel stim if the question is should we cancel it or should we not i feel like the answer is always to yes cancel it but i think it won't end up mattering anyway because there's a grand total of about fucking six units that can actually utilize that stim back at home and they're about to die right now so yeah i don't think it actually matters let's go ahead and kill all these marines and then we can honestly just blink right into the main base here and that's what we're going to do a tank's going to spawn and likely get killed immediately after this bunker We'll have a blank cooldown about to come in yet again, and we'll get that right on top of that tank. There we go. Kill that one off. The Reapers do come in to help assist, and that's actually going to mean that they are going to die. Uh, but that does mean that all the units are across back at home, so I feel like Unbeta now knows he can just fully commit with the Stalkers and continue to pressure here after he deals with this. Although, at the same time, I feel like he does need more things. Okay, yeah, he's spending his money now, getting a bunch of extra gateways. I think we need a robo. I'm kind of surprised he's going for so many extra gateways and not for an extra robo with this. Surely. Surely, I'm Data doesn't lose this game, right? Right? Surely not. That would be insane. However, I do see a world. I see a world where we suicide in the tanks. Okay, well, but if we're going to just lose all of the Marines outside of a bunker, okay, maybe that's not going to be what's happening here as we then jump onto the tank, get the bunker again as well, and yeah, that is surely about to be the end here. This is got to be it, although there's the tank. Uh, we need to get high ground vision. There we go. Blinks right on in. Kills it off, and Frogos is dead as fuck. I'm Data will be able to even up the score for another 1-1 one, one score line, leading us into a 2-2 two -two situation here in our first match. Very interesting. Very interesting. I do have to say, this is a bit spicy. I do like it. 
Look at that, Takawa getting the perfect prediction rates after going for the most beta cuck predictions possible. What a surprise. Wow, that's so crazy. All right. So yeah, let's go ahead and check in with those wonderful humans over on the desk. Excuse me, one human and the other Smurf. Hello, everybody, Guitar King. Um, you must have felt very nice after that first game, even though it was a, a total fiesta and must have been feeling awful seeing the second one. Yeah, uh, the first game, I think Frogos could have won the game like five minutes earlier than, you know, it happened. Like he got so scared of just one DT when in reality 1DT is just slow as hell, and you can just go and kill all of the probes. But then he somehow lost all of his SCVs and had to Cyclone SCV pool. Like, I'm sure if uh, Luolis was here on the desk, he'd say that Data's build reminded him uh, of a build from GSL 2011. <laughs> so it was really? just like a, like a eBay block into like a proxy... Well, I guess not a proxy, just the third base nexus into fast DTs. But then you don't get the robo up, so you just warp in slow warp in DTs at home. Yo, Guitar uh, King, but you want to hear something that's so insane that will blow your fucking preteen Zoomer mind? There literally no. weren't eBay blocks in 2011 because people didn't expand that early for it to actually do anything. Yeah, like only the the DT part really is the 2011 part. Yeah, probably. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the one base DT essentially. Yeah. Anyways. But, um, yeah, and the second game, I have zero clue why he made a tech lab and then made Reapers with a reactor. I think it would have been much better if he just made one gas, then produced with the the racks at home with no add on. Got, just got three Marines, and then got proxy Marauders. Yeah, that's what uh, I thought he was the racks do. across the map. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I think Data would have died because he only had one battery and he was going blink. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunate. But uh, yeah, as I've said, Frogos doesn't really like going Reapers in TVP anymore. And to be honest, with this build, I understand why. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, For sure. Also, note that Taco is also smurfing on the predictions. Yep. Oh, just feel talk casually away. predicting one one for everything and oh look one one oh look one one <laughs> i totally didn't tell him the results guys like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's awkward you're doing pretty good so far with these predictions man uh you know i'm doing all right i do like the series so let's see the the series so the first game uh Frogus was just scared of one dt the whole time for some reason he went all the way back home and we had to watch the longer game but that was just unfortunate to making no batteries. And then in game four, I think the reason that we saw STEM be uh, this weird proxy strategy to research STEM, I think that Frogos has just spent so long making Reapers, he's not sure he's allowed to make STEM at home in a game like that. <laughs> so that was just luck that he was able to do that. And uh, yeah, we saw our Reapers like I thought we would. Yeah, I'm surprised that you actually got even that prediction correct, <laughs> considering <laughs> how this, how the games have been shown from Frogos this season already. So yeah. Yeah. Not, Taco not, is tickets, actually yeah. just so locked in for this cast, it's insane. Uh, so I guess we'll just go right into the next series with Takua. So Taco, what is tell? Just tell us what happens in the next in the next two games, because apparently you know yeah. everything. So here's what's gonna happen in our pool four match. Yeah. And your pool four prediction here is. I've played both of these, and I really think it's going to be a 2-0 for Angrith. That's ju I'm just going with Ooh. my brain on this one. Ooh. It hurts. It hurts my heart, but I think that's what it's going to be. It is going to be a PvP as well. Zerila usually has been low enough to force off races by his opponents. However, this time it will not be the case. It's going to be a PvP situation. So Angrath will be playing main race. That's worth noting. Um... So, Guitar King, do you think it's going to be a 2 or oh, Why am I asking you? You literally are going to say, yeah, it's going to be 2 0 for my team. Oh, no, I'm so cool. Yeah, but, but uh, I have uh, something to sure, 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 you sure. Know, add. I think uh, I've been working a lot with Zerila and the PvP uh, because mm -hmm. I saw how the one base three gate robo went uh, from Zerila versus Takwa in week one. And uh, I think we made some adjustments to the build order choices. Because I saw that uh, hitting uh, one base timing attacks wasn't really uh, the specialty of Zerila, with uh, stalkers requiring micro 
to win and he was just in general very afraid because we played a lot of custom games and I won every single one of them. So I think I <laughs> yes, accidentally... Flex. Flexing on yeah, beating flex a fucking when... diamond player is so sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally my goal. I played but, uh, so many custom games. I'll let you know. I played so many custom games. I won all of them because I'm the best. But, yeah, uh, but we played so many of them, that... and God, oh my God, I'm better than this diamond player. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My point was that uh, Zerila was, uh, because of that, he was scared to, like, actually, you know, end the game because he didn't think he was winning hard enough, even though he could have absolutely did it. So uh, I have faith uh, in my guy Zerila. I think he's going to do very well. Uh, I, of course, I'm hoping for a 2-0, but honestly, if he takes a map, it will be very, very nice for me, because then I will know that my, uh, my and Hydra's, uh, you know, combined coaching at least, uh, got Cyrilla to a point where he can, you know, take uh, a good game. So, yeah. Nobody beats pool four players better than I do. I'm the pool one player of the team. I, I, no one can do it better than me. I, I, I know all the secrets. I know the, all the things. Guitar no, King. Guitar King. He's, he's certified in beating pool four players, I believe. So, <laughs> I've beaten pool four players. That's right. I did it. I beat them. You know, like, <laughs> nasty, nasty. I think Zarella is going to play. You can't trust him. <laughs> I do think Zarella is going to. These will be much closer games than maybe our week one games. I think Zarella will bring some mm -hmm. better better play. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Nasty well, pool four, four, four players. That's what we call them. Those nasty pool four players. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead into these games here. Thank you guys for your thoughts. We'll be back with you afterwards as we are going to be going into our potential final map here. Into, uh, what are we doing? Uh, yes, that's right. Zarela versus Angra. That's what I'm sorry. I was blanking. But anyways, here we go into that here. As we are going to be having on the bottom right hand side of the map. Appearing for the first time on the mainstream because he was uh, so desperate to actually be on the mainstream this time as he wasn't able to, to go there at all yet. So here he finally is. It is playing for the Corsair Blue Wings. None other than <gasps> Angrath. And on the top left hand side, playing for the Frog Fiber Battalion, getting a lot of coaching and getting absolutely dumpstered by someone about a thousand of them or higher than him. It is actually sorry, maybe more like 1,500 or more higher than than him. It is Zorila. What the fuck, Gemini? <laughs> and come on, you got you are on the cast. You cannot expect me to be nice. All right. You know what it you know what it means to get brought onto this fucking onto this fucking stream. I do not take these players lightly. They will be roasting. And if you've done something roast worthy, I will absolutely make fun of you for it. In front of a whole dozens of people. Zarela with the faster cypher, let's go. Oh my god, he's cooked. Angrath is in shambles. This cyber core is a grand total of five seconds slower. If this was Wings of Liberty and a four gate versus four gate, we would be absolutely fucked right now, but that's not been the, the case for... Do you, do you want to know something funny, actually? I actually find it really funny that I do this still. I have... Because... Because obviously I've played since Wings of Liberty and I've I've played pre PvP ever since the days where you know if your Cybercore legitimately is like a second slower than your opponents you will actually lose the game and I still to this day I have the habit of checking how fast my Cyber is compared to the opponent like I I I just instinctively do that every single time even though it means next to nothing now in PvP, just the way that the matchup works now. It's really not that important. You will just generally always get your warp ins off, no matter what, in the early game. But I, I still have that habit of doing that. 14 fucking years later, the, 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 the scars that I have from fucking Wings of Liberty 4 gates, man. You, you wouldn't understand, you little zoomers. 
you would not understand. The fucking shit I've been through, all right? The fucking nails I've had to step on to get to where I am right now as a Protoss player. You guys don't even get it. You don't even understand the type of shit that we had to deal with 14 years ago, all right? You are the privileged Zoomers playing in this super perfect safe. Oh, you're, you're, you're like two years ago, you're like, oh my God, Proxy Robo is so hard to deal with. Oh my God, there's proxies in PvP every day. Yeah, come and play when it was fucking Wings of Liberty, Korean four gates with 50 pylons getting spammed in your main base the whole fucking time. And you were barely trying to survive on a knife's edge by having a 0.2% second le uh, slower warp gate research than your opponent. You were fucked, all right? You were fucked. All right, I've successfully bought enough time for something to happen, excellent. All right, we got the Forge and Robo coming down for Angrath with the only the Robo coming down from Zarela here. Uh, and then into the Twilight Council, so it looks like he's gonna be going for a Immortal Glaive opener, which I do quite like, and I kind of like Guitar King for giving him that choice as well of build in this PvP. I think that's definitely something that can definitely suit his strengths. There's very minimal micro needed for that, and it's something that can really catch your opponent off guard and just bulldoze a game into your favor. Uh, unfortunately, he forgot to make probes for a good solid 15 seconds there, so that's actually quite annoying. Uh, but that uh, hopefully won't matter too much. Uh, it's going to actually matter kind of a lot. We're down quite a few probes here for absolutely no reason. It's surreal. It's actually really unfortunate. There's a proxy pile on here as well from Angrath, which could potentially be very lethal if we do anything with that. See, Cobble, this is what I'm talking about. This is literally what I'm making fun of. You're you're just like, meanwhile, if we get every game, you you literally you I'm 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 actually being unironic right now. You actually don't even you don't actually even know. Like, you don't actually understand how fucking hard that shit was to deal with. Especially with the high- because we had high ground warp ins as well. Oh my fucking god. You actually don't get it. You just don't get it. Okay, anyways. Uh, Proxy Pylon got scouted by Zerila, so that's quite nice. It's going for the Glaives, like I said, getting those four extra gateways to really pump it on up into the two base all-in uh, version of it. And uh, Angrath actually seems to have scouted this, as he's gotten the key in of the extra gateways coming in. Not all of them, but at least enough. So he will be getting a couple batteries and even a cannon defensively while going straight into a robo bay for disruptors. That's actually kind of sick, I'm not gonna lie. It's actually a pretty good idea. Because if we can just delay this push for long enough and get like one or two ruptors out, there's no shot Zareel is gonna be able to micro and split adepts versus disruptor balls. But, on the same card, something is telling me there's a very low chance of Angrath being able to properly place a Disruptor Ball in the middle of said Adepts. So, basically what I'm saying is this is going to be one of the greatest Clown Fiestas we've ever seen so far. And I am so excited for it. Uh, instead of actually using the Robo Bay to make the units that are actually very good against what the opponent's doing, instead we're actually going to just further tech and take a third base. So. Uh, Angrath, well, so I, sh I was doubting the ability to micro the disruptors, but I honestly should have been doubting his ability to make game decisions that were extremely rational and based on what he actually scouted. So that's really unfortunate here because this attack is going to be coming in nice and heavily. I don't really know what this is. I guess he's sending two in to do a little distraction poke into the main base and then sending the rest off to attack. I kind of like this. No cancel on this base for some reason. and. Uh, Zarela sending off these two adepts, but F2ing them all forward anyways. And now we're going to be getting into the actual attack here, as Angrath is supply blocked as well, as that pylon to the forward uh, position, getting killed off, is going to fuck him like that. And here comes the attack, no shade onto the units, and uh, that, uh, so a lot of these adepts are actually kind of stuck here, but I think it actually doesn't matter, because the one unit that's so vital to this defense is actually stuck in the main base by a battery as Angrath not paying attention to his own wall-off situation, and that nice focus fire is all by Zarela, uh, will be able to just completely target that down, and this is looking like a very nice win for Zarela here. 
with a very well executed build. I mean, he lost the he he wasn't really perfect on the pro production at the beginning there, but everything after that seemed actually pretty on point. His macro slipping a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it's pool four. But very nicely done. Zarela actually getting a nicely cooked win here for the Frogify team, meaning that they only need one single map left to actually take the series and put themselves ever closer to qualifying for the deciding matches for the second half of the season. I can't believe it. Angrath was Corsair's most clutch player and he lost. Oh, it's so true. That's so true, Karathos. Oh my god. Everyone say thank you, Karathos, in chat, by the way, for making these super sick highlight videos every single week. The last one that just came out yesterday was so fucking good. 16 minutes of pure hilarity. An absolute god amongst men. And on the bottom right hand side, unfortunately having a early scout on what was happening but didn't quite react in the way that was fully needed. Playing for the Corsair Blue Wings, it is, Angrath. Top left side playing for the Frog Fiber Battalion, taking a nice quick one game lead in this series. Finally getting a nice win up on the main stage. It is Zorila. <clears throat> Site Delta being a one gate map, but both players going for two gate expand. Not unexpected as this is pool four. It's quite difficult to get the one gate expands to work. So one gate expands don't really exist at this MMR range. So that's totally fine. I do like this a lot. Both players going to be feeling nice and comfortable going into this game here. And it is kind of interesting as well, as uh, some of you have noted in chat here too, is that, uh, I mean, the Corsair Blue Wings, this is the essentially third edition of their team, initially starting off as the Jin Lair Pink Wings, going off then into the Zin Era Jade Wings for Season 2, and, uh, I mean, Jin Lair was, was it Jin Lair? Yes, Jin Lair was able to win in Season number 1, and then did extremely well in Season number 2, also getting to the Finals. Potentially, we're going to have back-to-back -back season wins, but getting stopped there. But regardless, both times getting extremely far in the seasons. And this time, uh, the Corsair Blue Wings in ATL Season 3 are have found their match, it seems like, as, you know, the, their, their core of Azura Heroku. And, uh, actually, is that the only two core players they were able to keep this time? Can't remember. Um... Anyways, the the core, the two core of, of Heroku and Azura, unfortunately, uh, hasn't really been able to do everything for them, and they've been having a bit of a tough time. Oh no! There's no way that lets. There's no way. Look at him. He's thinking so. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts so bad when you have, oh my God, it hurts. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, look at it too. It's, it was literally just one hex too far over as well. It wasn't even like it was fully blocking or anything. Oh. Oh. God damn. The two stalker move out from from uh, from Aang. Aang is so lucky this game. Moving out with those two fucking stalkers was insane. Like literally the most insanely ballsy play of all time. Like there's no reason that those things should actually be home in his base safe right now. But then also getting the scout off that it is going to be a late uh, nexus here. It's kind of interesting too because if 
if Zarela kind of didn't panic and noticed what was happening, he could have even maybe used this as bait. He could have let the Stalkers walk up, not attack his pylon, see that there's no Nexus, force the Stalkers home, force Aang to think he's one base all inning, and then you just expand behind it. That would have been a Giga Chad move. However, it's very difficult to get that, uh, to think about that in time. And a proxy Dark Shrine coming from Angrath. I kind of like that. I do quite like that. However, Zarela is sitting in his base with an Observer right on top of his units. So that, uh, if we take that into account, I actually fucking hate this from Ag. We'll see if Zarela ever ends up sending this out. I do like that he's kind of keeping it at home and sending the Hallucinations to Scout instead, as they are obviously better at that. Well, they are usually better at that. I'll correct my statement. And getting the full scout on what's happening. It's going to be the exact same thing. Out of Zarela in game number two. Uh, unfortunately, he's also again forgetting to make probes. And given the fact that his Nexus was so late on top of that. Means that his economy is really not feeling it right now. <laughs> yeah, Angrath has the goaded FF of all time screenshot. Yes, that is true. That is Angrath. Thirty-five or less. You sit on only thirty fucking five work. You don't even get a full set two base saturate like uh, like sixteen no gas saturation. That's wild to me. That's wild that you don't even get the three extra probes with the nat. To be fair, I, I've always been doing the one that is not the full all-in. I, I just do the one that, like, kind of fakes the pressure, then kind of can expand behind it as well, so I, I'm not, like, cutting the probe super hard. Oh, you pull off gas to saturate? That makes more sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually. DT's warping in into the main base here. The Observer, ca uh, like, coincidentally, has been left behind, so this actually is in a decent-ish position to potentially defend, but the problem remains, though, is that there's two DTs in two different spots, and now this is a real having to do some crisis management here while doing the attack. He's not really paying attention, has already lost 14 probes at home to this. The Observer is... Okay, it is right here. Okay, we are going to be able to clean this up with the Stalkers and the Observer. I would love him to be getting another Observer here, because we don't have one with our main army, and that is something that we would need to be able to push through, because there surely would be a defensive DTs here, but apparently, never mind, it's only going to be Stalkers. Uh, but, yeah, this is going to start to look really bad for Zarela here, and, I mean, we might be going straight into an ace match in our first match today, because this is going to be very difficult for Zarela to actually do anything here. He's obviously so disoriented by this DT attack, he doesn't even know what to do with his main army here. As he's completely uh, just so confused. He's even making probes, chrono boosting up. He was chrono boosting one probe each at the Nexus and now doesn't have enough money to make any more. So you can tell he's just in full panic mode and doesn't even know what to do at this point. So, a bit unfortunate. Uh, supply, supply block, though, from Aang is actually kind of funny. However, this is just such a large army at this point. We, we've delayed long enough, but the three the, the three adepts in the main base should actually potentially do something. I would have liked it uh, if we just shaded on top of these units maybe instead, but I think regardless is going to be very difficult. The two immortals aren't even in range, sadly. We're going to try to shuffle them over the force fields, but it's so real sloppy as they're not even going to get out of the prism. And oh my god, okay. That was a bit brutal, but... That means we're going for an ace match in the first series. It's kind of insane, actually. Wasn't expecting that. So, a 3-3 situation to be had in our first match. This is surely going to be pretty epic. I'm actually very excited to see what happens with this one. Because uh, this is, I mean, this is a very important match. Like, literally, like, the winner of this essentially qualifies themselves... As the uh, the person or as the team that can win, 
or sorry, can can qualify for the playoffs. Oh, apparently the ace is being played live, I'm being told. The replay that I was sent is actually a fake ace replay, and they're going to be playing this live, interestingly enough. That's actually a, an interesting twist on all of this, so okay, cool. Uh, great. So yeah, let's, we'll get those people talking to me in a little bit, but while we're waiting for that, let's go over himself. to the desk. Hello, desk. Welcome back. Yeah. Hi, Guitar Kinga. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I don't know your thoughts. Go ahead, talk. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm happy, very happy that Cyrilla got a game versus Aang. Uh, I, it's, it's nice to see Aang, you know, coming down from his PvP throne a little bit. Uh, so yeah, uh, he did the Glaives thing, but second game just blocking the Nexus is so unfortunate. <laughs> just uh, it it just feel it feels so bad uh so but uh he only made one sentry so what i told him was uh if you scout like something fishy uh, when you have three sentries you send two hallucinations to the edges of the map to scout for dt shrines because i know that ang is a dirty dirty little dt proxier <laughs> and he likes to do that so I told Zarela, like, if he isn't all in you, just send the hallucinations to the edges. But he only made one sentry and couldn't send the hallucinations. So Ang actually got super lucky with his DTs and super lucky with the Nexus placement. Uh, so that that was a bit sad, but I understand, like, the, the pressure of playing live, well, sort of live, can get to him. And uh, regardless, I'm still very happy with what we managed to cook up, uh, because as I said, like to Takwa in, in just like, you know, talking, uh, I saw that Zarela wasn't really the the person who likes uh, target firing with stalkers. <laughs> so the anti anti cobble, if you will. And I gave him a more a move friendly composition. And I think that plan worked out quite well. So, yeah. Yep, I would say that's true. Uh, Takwa, you predicted a 2-0 this time, so this is the first time you've not predicted a 1-1, and that means you don't have pr predictions anymore. Uh, your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm here to talk about the games, so I'm going to proceed to talk about the games here. <laughs> sure. No, it's fine. I mean, I, I was very happy for Zerilla. You know, it was... Game 5, it basically just walked in, just A-moved and won. And then uh, the block nexus. We've all been there. I also want to give a big shout out to Real for not just leaving the game blocking his nexus because I would have been so angry. I definitely would have left that game. But I'm very excited for an ace match. Especially that it's live. Yes. And. Uh, hold on a second. I would say this Glaive's like meta on PvP is very interesting too. I, I found that very interesting. Guitar King had a lot of. Interesting thoughts on that. And then Anger did his very standard, I'm going to make DT's proxy. Yes. Uh, yeah. And the ace match players are going to be Heroku being sent out from the Corsair Blue Wings and Hydra being sent out from the Frog of Fire Battalion. So that means Heroku is being sent out to snipe the captain, forcing them to off-race, as of course, if anyone is unaware, the off-race rules of the ATL are in place for these types of scenarios, where if it is a pool mismatch, the higher MMR player, if they are 600 MMR or above, must off-race with their closest MMR off-race to keep the match as even as possible. So that means that Heroku will be forcing Hydra's off-race, someone... Hydra, the captain of Frogify, usually at what, like five point like six or something like that, MMR. Yes, something like that. Or sure. Heroku is normally at what four? I can just look. Four point one k, sort of. Yes, much much lower. Yeah, they're at four two right now. Uh, so we'll be forcing mm -hmm. Hydra to be off racing here in the last match of this ace match. So very spicy. Some very interesting stuff here. Uh, Guitar King, I guess uh, you can maybe talk about your team's thoughts a little bit on just uh, sending out Hydra uh, in the same match. Yeah, so, of course, it's kind of the games uh, of sniping, right? right? So, yeah. uh, we thought that since Mag is in France, uh, he definitely wasn't going to be sent out. 
So we really kind of thought that uh, it's either going to be Azura or uh, Heroku being sent out. And we decided to sort of uh, Hyder is still the best fit uh, because I would also have to offer Ace versus Heroku if I was sent out. And I think Hyder is just a little bit better with the off race than I am because I do not play off race whatsoever, which I should actually fix. But <laughs> yeah, so we kind of just kind of gathered in a circle of frogs as we, as frogs normally do. Uh, and we agreed <laughs> to send the biggest frog uh, out to to curb stomp everything essentially <laughs> fair enough uh taqua what are you thinking here was going to be going on with this ace match this is not very surprising i i can't remember like what week or if it was in the playoffs but i'm quite quite certain in season one because i was on uh uh teammates with uh haraku here pretty sure we had a very similar situation of sending out haraku in an ace match expecting the captain to force the uh the off race so Har haraku's been here before i think we didn't see it much earlier with his matches as much but this would definitely be the place where haraku would bring out something really 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 tricky haraku. whatever his name is haraku, haraku, haraku is indeed is gonna haraku this world up in this ace match he's gonna yeah. rock it up so we'll let's go. Uh, surely be seeing some type of super cheesy shit. Like I wouldn't be surprised right now, to be honest, if we see the uh, if we see the super fast Roachling Queen Nidus all in that he was using mm -hmm. super much or to super effect in the previous seasons. I literally think it's going to be exactly that. Actually, That's do we guess. know what? Um, I'm sorry if I miss it. What is uh? What are what's the matchup? ZVT. Uh, uh, Hydra, yeah. Hydra will be playing Terran in this. Terran. The good race. Yeah. The good, the two good races playing against each other. <laughs> true. So true. All things ZVT. Yes. Angrath is telling me I hope Ginny reads up in chat for content. What's the content that we got here? Uh, I think it's going to be a mag moment. Uh, what am I looking at here? Hey, Gemini, for the next YouTube instructional video, can you do a build order for this Glaive Immortal thing? Also, don't make it public and just let me have the video link. <laughs> okay. Sure thing. Uh, don't sure thing. make it public. Oops. <laughs> and then Angra says, we Oops. were literally this close to sending me to snipe Hydra's Terran. Only reason I didn't go is because Heroku really wanted to. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Uh, Actually, if... Uh, if uh, is my Hydra... response to that. If actually, if uh, Mag was sent out, he wouldn't be able to force off race because uh, Hydra was uh, five six hundred at the beginning of the week, and Mag was above five k, so Angrath. it technically would this be less Angrath than six hundred saying... MMR difference. This is Angrath that was saying to do that. Mm. Not not Mag. Nah, yeah. So Mag wouldn't have sniped the Terran. He would have had to play against Hydra's DOS. So uh... we're, we're we're not talking about Mag. We're talking about Angrath. Yeah, 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 but... I'm confused. Am I, am I having a moment, or are you having a moment? Who's having a moment right now? Should we talk about oh, predictions? Both. Sure, that's a great idea, Takwa. Sure. Go ahead! What is your prediction, <laughs> Takwa? <laughs> I will give you my prediction now. <laughs> I think Haraku's gonna win it. I'm Haraku times three. Message. I'm not giving that up. <laughs> <Haraku>. <laughs> I hate all of you. Oh yeah, I, I was having a moment, by the way, yeah, because you confused Mag and Ang, and so I, you know, I stuck. Okay, we were moving yeah. on from that. Anyways, what's your right? No, there's no point in asking Kadarking's prediction because he thinks it's going to be his team winning, so that's totally fine. Obviously, uh, we're going to be going into this in just a moment here. I am super excited, and hopefully, Haraku can rock our world here and watch the uh, the the Corsair Blue Wings come back to their former glory. <laughs> and send themselves to a win here. We'll find out as we are going to be going over to the caster's desk as Bold Mjolja himself will be joining me slightly earlier than anticipated to be able to cast this ace match as well. Welcome Bold Mjolja back to the caster's desk. Unfortunately, we did not raise enough money to fly you back out here in person uh, a second time. We'll, of course, need everyone here on the stream to uh give us 1200 more dollars to to be able to do that but uh yeah welcome back bull how are you feeling 
Uh, I'm feeling good. Had to get on the cast for the incredibly hyped ace match for the Frogify Ribadelion. The fact that everything has come down to this. Now, there may be some mathematicians in the chat who are saying, well, they could win this and still get eliminated. And to those people, I say, shut up, nerd. <laughs> this is for all the marbles. And the fact that it's Heroku versus Hydra's Terran... Uh, means that this is a little bit of a little bit of a wild card. So I'm interested to see what happens here on Oceanborn between not Heroku but Haraku. <laughs> the bottom right, the French blue Zerg player trying to stave off the comeback from the Frogify Ribadelion Haraku. <laughs> Are you going to do the top two? And in the top left, in the light green, representing not only frogs, but fuck it, toads too, tadpoles, <laughs> all amphibians who reside across all corners of the world. <laughs> it is the Dutch Protoss player off racing as Terran, representing Frogify Ribadalian, Hydra. Thank you for that. <laughs> Excellent also, introduction. Who could have seen this coming? An off racing Protoss player says to himself, hey, what's the most fucked up bullshit I could do? <laughs> mm, let's just proxy a couple <laughs> barracks and see what happens. Oh, he's doing the MCAN classic. He's going for a oh. full on proxy four rack. Surely there's going to be a, a fourth one getting dropped down here. Because uh, three wouldn't make any sense at all, actually. It's supposed to be two or four, I think, but. I, I just want to call attention to this overlord that is queued up to get kind of almost a little bit oh. close to these barracks. <gasps> no, but the SCV! The SCV! <gasps> no oh. way! No, no way. way! He pulled that back, dude. Hi Hydra. Oh okay, first my of all, god. First of all, you should not be doing this. You should not be moving those SCVs down yeah. the ramp. You should be pocketing them for as long as possible, obviously. Yeah. But Hydra was not punished for that moment of indiscretion. Oh my goodness. And and also, look at the Overlord going towards the natural ramp. That, if it stays on this Q pattern, that will not see the top of the base, but it doesn't matter. He sees the Marines now. He knows what we are dealing with. And we're getting a lot of free damage on these links oh. already with the Marines. Two links for nothing before we even get to the natural is a really, really good start here for Hydro. <gasps> we're also going to get this Overlord. We are going to be so supply blocked. There's not even an Overlord on the way. Oh no. He's literally super supply blocked. He did, he, yeah, he didn't even, he was gonna be supply blocked anyway. He just forgot his third oh, fucking overlord. No. That's so unfortunate. Heroku. We still do not have it on the way. Oh my God. He thought that the hatchery was gonna be enough to, to fucking, to, to do it. But he's still it's supply over. blocked with that. It's, there's literally nothing he can make it's right over. now. There's no oh. way. Oh. Gemini, I cannot tell you the catharsis that it is for me to be seeing the Frogify Ribadellion win this series, and not only that, for it to happen by killing a French player. This is... <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, yeah, it's over. I mean, at this point, a transition can obviously happen for Hydra if he wants it to. No, he's pulling. This is an His transition is to go even more all in by pulling SCDs. This is an incredibly Luolus move, by the way, to make a supply depot at the front. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So these bailings are going to basically be the the one thing. Heroku is still supply blocked, by the way. I this game is going to last a grand total of four minutes long, and Heroku is going to be supply blocked for three fucking minutes of it. Nice split back here from Hydra as well to make sure those Banelings yeah, do as little bad. damage as possible. Going to be we splitting back yet again. Clem. Nicely done to Based. target fire. Finally, Heroku's not supply blocked anymore, and that last Baneling just doesn't want to do anything. and just ends it all, just like Wolus. And these Marines and SCVs will surely find zero resistance coming up into this main base as the drone's getting forced to pull, and the Ling's jumping on top as well, but those are going to instantly get killed off. Nice micro here from Hydra yet again as Heroku is getting blasted out of this fucking series. Oh, you know what I think did it here? I think it was all the chatters spamming this frog to help the frogs. Hydra <laughs> takes the win in the ace match and keeps the hopes and dreams 
of the Frogify Rivadalian alive, at least for another day. Damn. This is literally the Gooper story all over again. It's like they were just completely out, essentially, after losing all of those matches in the beginning of the se- excuse me, at the beginning of the season. And now mm-hmm. they're slowly, slowly working their way back up to the final season or the final week of the regular season. And it also now relies on my team to not fuck them over. <laughs> this is actually You know, you know what's so funny, funny is not only is the Frogify Ribbit Alien the goobers of this season, but the goobers are also the goobers of this <laughs> season. <laughs> because they are also down to the wire in their last match of the regular season against the Kitty Cabal this week. Yeah. So in a it's it truly is incredibly poetic that we have found ourselves in this position not only just again but in two different scenarios it's just it's just too good to be honest it's just too good yeah it's an excellent situation to have and uh i mean for all the views it's great for uh my team to be the uh the gatekeeper once again is also really funny and uh, i hope we can Mm -hmm. close that fucking door right in their faces so Feel good right now, Frogify, because I swear to God, we are going to make sure that that's the last time you feel it. As we're going to go right over to the desk to get their final thoughts on this before we go into our next series. Uh, so we will be going and seeing what they have to say here. Guitar King, congratulations on your team finding their win here. But uh, like I just said, enjoy your roller coaster for right now because you are about to come to a halting stop after this week is over. I. Sure. I'm going to go with the Magnath route. My response right now. <laughs> sure. But, uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm really happy. Honestly, once once the Overlord barely didn't scout the racks, I, I knew we had it in the bag. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Bull, uh, I, I, I'm glad Bull lost those 10 channel points. <laughs> uh, because, oh man. And uh, Azura said that his team disbanded the moment the GG was called. Like, four people instantly left that Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, sad for the for the Corsair Blue Wings. Uh, I you know, I wish them all the best, but uh, I, I thank them also for keeping the frogs alive. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy the frogs at least get to hope for another day. Yeah, it's honestly insane, actually, just the the the, the story of them. Because obviously, like I was saying before, they had you know such good placings in the first two seasons, and now, uh, really, how the glory have fallen, or the what the fuck, the mighty? I can't fucking talk. How the mighty have fallen, <laughs> lo- uh, itty bitty banana losing committee. all of their glory. Itty bitty banana committee. Itty bitty banana committee. Itty bitty banana committee. Get fucked. <laughs> Yes, I can still talk, all right? No, they have lost their glory. You messed up the first one. They have lost their glory, and they are dead in this season. They are the second team to be eliminated here in the ATL season number three. It is uh, sad to say, of course, but Corsair has seen better days, and they will be exiting today, so... Commiserations to them, but uh, at least they put up a banger final series for us. Takwa, any thoughts on our final uh, match here uh, of the of the clan war? I I know it's always the go-to if you're, you're playing your off race, so you're gonna cheese. But man, I really don't expect Hydra to just come in and drop a bunch of proxy barracks and just blast Haraku over out into the sun like that. Haraku times five. <laughs> Haraku. Like like Bully had said, it was our French sacrifice, and it makes me sad. But congratulations to Frogify. I did think they were gonna win though. Overall, <laughs> Thank apparently, you, uh, Takwa. Her- Haraku saying that the team that I own is permanently disbanded. Me and Azura will not be picking each other next season. GG's looking forward to the rest of the season. So, this is apparently the final iteration of the Corsair Blue Wings as well. There will no longer be any Gen Air Green Wings pun names going into the further seasons. So, this has <laughs> finally been it. We've had two great seasons out of them and one lackluster season, and apparently that's enough for them to kick the bucket in. Sure. And we'll no yeah, longer this is be like trying a, to reform the super team going into the final season. This is like when you uh, when you beat someone so bad that they make a post on Twitter that they have to take a break from StarCraft 2. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so true. A, a, a moment. <laughs> 
All right, well, that's gonna be it for the first series. Thank you guys for joining me here on the desk. Congratulations again to Guitar King and your team for taking the victory. Taco, any final words here for the desk? Just wanna thank you for inviting me. It's been a great, been a great season and I'm looking forward to the playoffs. Absolutely beautiful. I am as well. Guitar King, any final words here? Yes, I, I love all of my frogs and I, we're doing this for Zelly, of course, trying to make the playoffs. Uh, for Zelly. Yeah, I'm very... For Zelly! I'm very, where's, where's the yes. Lord of the Rings gif? It's like the Aragorn charging into yeah, battle, yeah. you know, for Zelly. Zelly's currently yeah. at the top of a fucking volcano right now, trying to get <laughs> any amount of dignity left and, and out of her... <laughs> <laughs> by throwing yeah. something into a fucking into the, the, the lava what what would the ring yeah. be in this scenario what, what would the ring be that she's trying to throw into the volcano right now her parents mm, the frog <laughs> that... maybe a, a, a no she loves frog, the, fr the frog is too she is the frog right that's that's truly what it is mm, yeah i suppose actually that's... All right, anyways. Good question we, we can ponder that another time but yeah yes. i am very proud of all my frogs uh, I am very happy with my team, and I am happy with my captain who managed to win today. So, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Very, very team spirits. I, I, I really enjoy it. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you guys uh, for joining me, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Bye bye. Excellent. All right. That is going to be the first series of the day done and dusted here pretty nicely on time as well. We will be going into the next series just after a little break when I can shake up the uh, the stream and get everything all switched out here. So do not go anywhere. We will be back with plenty more ATL action coming your way after the break.
All right, welcome back everybody to the second match here for the ATL season number three. We're going to be having our uh, return of May the Forge be with you on the mainstream as well as the low skill apologists coming on up here. Should be a pretty cool match. Uh, obviously, May the Forge be with you being the Cannon Rush team headed by Bowenon. And then coincidentally the low skill apologists also being headed by a cannon rusher in gref unfortunately neither of those two players are playing today as it is pool two three and four but regardless perhaps we will still be seeing some cannon rushes today as we're actually going to get every single matchup here as well we're going to be getting pvp pvt and pvz so that's pretty cool and i have successfully bought the perfect amount of time uh, so that way November could remember that they were actually supposed to be here on the desk. So that's super great. We're going to be going into that desk right now with November, who just joined, uh, and Character. Hello, hello, both of you. Welcome to the desk hello, yet again. Hello, both of you. Welcome. Why am I hearing myself in your fucking... All right. I... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fucking my mouse. Anyways, uh, I'd like to refute its slander that... Uh... I forgot to look up. In fact, I did I, I did uh, message you yesterday, and then I told you that specifically that I that if you didn't need to wake up earlier, you should tell me. And then you told me that we still start at nine, so I set my alarm to eight thirty regardless because I knew you were gonna lie, and then I slept it anyways until eight fifty. So I don't know what the, what the problem really is, but um, yeah. You did not message me. I one hundred percent did. I'm looking for no, it right you, now. I, you are not in my DM list. Whatsoever. Oh, I didn't DM you. I put it in the yeah. chat. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, did you at me? Yeah. Okay. Well, regardless, that is the worst place to put that <laughs> if you want me to <laughs> make sure that I see it. Yeah. November moment. Anyways, welcome, November. Hey. And character. Hello, character. How are you feeling today? I'm sure it's a uh, bright and early, well, like 3 a.m. for you, isn't it? No. Uh, well, see. Uh, usually match one is at like 4 a.m., but match two is 6 a.m. Oh, I which see. Which is nice. uh, it's a little better. Yeah. Because I, but I only slept four hours. I went for a 5k run. I took a shower. I fell asleep for four hours, and then nice. uh, you know that you know that feeling when you uh, you wake up and you feel uh, less awake than when you went to sleep. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah. after 5k but, too, that's intense. Eh. Well, uh, so I started running more recently. I I had started, uh, and yeah. Anyway. Anyways, let's talk about Starcraft. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Starcraft. We have a wonderful match it's here. Forge, important. may the Forge be with you versus Low Skill Apologists. Uh, the first match is going to be Go Puncher versus Brady, a PVP here on the mainstream. Surely going to be an interesting one. I do actually kind of like watching Go Puncher play for some reason. It's always kind of fun. Uh, so, character, you have any thoughts about what's going to happen in that PvP? Uh, I forgot to do any match prep because I was hoping someone would actually replace me, but, uh... As expected? No, I have no idea. Great. Yeah, uh, I don't do any match prep at all. Like, <laughs> or, sorry, not match prep, matching? I meant, um... Uh, prep? caster prep. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, like, match prep, cast prep, like, I don't know, same thing, like... Every game, you just kind of like fuck around and do what's do whatever, do whatever cheats you know you feel like on a day. Keep it keep it on the table, but I don't know. If there isn't six cannon rushes in a row from the cannon rush team when there's an all Protoss lineup, I'm disappointed. True. I know, right? I mean, <laughs> probably won't happen. As, uh, who was it? Game? I think it was Ardent. Who could have ever predicted the cannon rush team to make cannons? I know, right? Um, Shocking. It is a uh, it is a PVP. So scandalous. I know, right? It is PvP, so it is an easy too low for, for team cannons. Uh, although I am sure that since this is the actual, although you know there is a chance because this is the uh, actual first week that Jen was actually casting uh, the cannon team. Maybe they did lose. You just want to see them lose. I know. Did you say it's my first time casting the cannon team? Sorry, second time. After, second time. Yeah. Yeah. After the first time, you know, six games of cannon rush, you're like, I don't know, none of this anymore. Yeah, I do. I do want to see six games of cannon rushes, but I don't know if all of the players on the cannon rush team are actually going to cannon rush because I've never seen Go Puncher do it, and I also just don't really know um, what Raptus does. Uh, but uh, well, 
I think I vaguely remember looking at Raptus's games because, well, he's not in the same group. He is advancing out of the group, though my team didn't wind up going first. Uh, uh, let me think. Uh, I, I remember one game where he went, like, proxy double immortal, and that was it, I think. Ooh, spicy. Spicy, Yeah, but, spicy. you know, like, the way I see it is, like, uh, Raptus is, like, Count Dooku, and Goat Patrick is, like, uh, Anakin. And Bonon is obviously Dark Plagueis Y, so, you know, spending a lot of time with the Bonon might corrupt him to the dark set of cannons. You know? So, dark... So, wait, Bonon is... Bonon gets Bonon killed is, by uh, his his apprentice. Then Who, who's his apprentice? Yeah, then who's yeah. Darth? Then who's Sidious? Who's the one that's oh, better than Bonon? Bonon. Yeah, sorry, I haven't watched Star Wars in a while. Yeah, I, I called yeah. you out on that. I wasn't letting that one slip there. All right, nice, very good. All right, character, what's your prediction for this first match? One one two zero. Oh, what do you got? Uh, well, you see, Goat Puncher is Goat in his name, and so obviously two zero oh, Goat Puncher. I don't actually know. Excellent, thank you. November, your uh, score prediction. Cannons are LP 2-0. Thank you very much. All right, let's go over to a person that hopefully has better analysis than that. It is none other than Bull Mjolja joining me back here on the casting desk for the spot that he did sign up for. Welcome back, Bull. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, I forgot to invite you to the party, sorry. Uh, yes, are you excited for hopefully some cannon rushes in this series? Uh, very excited. Very excited. I uh, I do think the most based thing that could happen here is that uh, Goat Puncher just does the unbeatable build twice in a row. <laughs> yeah. uh, that is that is absolutely what I would like to see. I would think that actually what's going to happen is that Bready is going to play standard and Goat Puncher will play standard. I think that probably favors Bready based on what I've seen. And I do think that if Goat Puncher uh, loses, that he will do the thing that Alaton surely told him to do, which is pick Oceanborn and Unbeatable Build. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. my prediction. So I'm getting extremely specific here, but that's what, I, that's what I'm going for. Nice. And if you end up being correct on that, then that would just be the greatest call of all time. And we'll make for yeah. an excellent highlight video. If, so you're really playing for the views, and that's what I like to hear. That's exactly right. And if I'm correct, this is an implicit agreement between me and everyone in chat that you will each give me $1,200 so that I can fly back to Korea <laughs> and cast the finals. Yes, exactly. Hopefully that does happen. And uh, make sure everyone, hopefully everyone was listening to that because it's extremely, extremely necessary. But uh, anyway, so we are going to be going into this next match of May the Forge Be With You versus Low Skill Apologists. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. We're going to be getting started with it right now. Oh my god, I timed it perfectly. Nice, I'm so good at this. All right, here we go into our first match of this next clan war. It is going to be on the bottom right-hand side playing four. May the Forge be with you. Sending out a probe extremely early with a pylon, not in the normal spot. Is he actually going to do it? It's Goat Puncher. 
And on the top left hand side, not using the correct team color, it is the recipient of what is likely about to be another cannon rush. It is Breddy. Oh my Go god, he's even, <gasps> he's even doing Go the puncher. based one as well below the fucking thing. Oh my god, he has been coached to shit. This is crazy. I actually can't Incredible. believe he's doing it. Incredible. Incredible. You know, you gotta respect a guy who says, I know this is the obvious thing for me to do, <laughs> but let's just do it anyway. I mean, it's so Although simple. Brett, little, even scouting. Slow. He was even scouting on the left for a cannon rush, but he's not expecting it in this spot, which is oh, barely not. Oh, he might have actually. S no, he did not see it at all. All right, here comes the extra pylon in the top as well. He's gonna get the block. Oh, no. so close. Oh, goat puncher. Oh, goat puncher. Oh, oh, oh well, you can't do that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, as long as he keeps high ground vision, it might be okay though. Uh, this low ground pylon, this low ground cannon will be getting up. Yeah, there is a chance, and he's and Breddy is chasing with too many probes here. It's worth noting. True. Uh, so the fact that he's gonna get these yep. two probes is quite nice. Goat Buncher does need to keep that other oh. probe alive. Does save it. Okay, that's good. Uh, this sort of top left cannon can actually be attacked by the Zealot without being hit from the low ground uh, cannon right now. So he does need to try to get as much damage on that as quickly as possible. You thought. Uh, He's you attacking thought. from the wrong side. Oh, he could have blocked. He needed to go down to the bottom left. Yeah. Bro, he could have blocked the zealot in two. That could have been crazy. I but think. I think it's over. He's not even yeah. producing a zealot. He's frazzled. It's. I think it's over. I no, think yeah, this Puncher's is, done it. There's no way. He's literally only getting a cyber finished right now. All of his buildings are in range of all the cannons. He's yep. trying to chrono out the stalker, but it's going to get depowered as Breddy completely falling to the cannon rush. We didn't expect Go Puncher of all people to be the one to actually bring out the straight up cannon rush, but he does bring it out. And there's an attempted proxy Stargate and base being thrown down here by Breddy. Okay. So I kind of, I do respect that he immediately uh, abandons the idea of defending the cannons and going for this. However, I feel like he could have maybe tried for it even slightly faster, but you know, it's totally fine. Uh, it's really the only option I think that he has at this point to be able to yes. actually find a way back into this game, so that's still okay for him. And it's going to take a little bit of time for Go Puncher to actually get the cannons in range of the Nexus here. And I do like that he's also already transitioning as well. He's not just being like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to win the game. I can just keep making cannons and zealots and I will win. He is getting uh, a cyber. He is getting a assimilator. So he is versed on the follow-up as well, which is quite nice to see. I have to be a little critical of Breddy getting a second Stargate next to the first Stargate that he then canceled after realizing that he would not have enough gas to actually be able to produce any Stargate units. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's I agree, it's, it's sort of his only chance. Uh, Goat Puncher obviously should make a battery and a cannon at home. You have to think that if this guy is still in the game, there's probably uh, something going on out there. Yeah, that's we, actually very. Ooh, we, that's a, we need to we need to also uh, pull these probes away from the cannon. We're losing some some probes unnecessarily here. Uh, now is the time where we have to pull all of them and recall. We I know you're you're trying to not reveal that that proxy nexus is out there, but at this point we just can't afford to keep losing these probes. Hold we up. Really need to do that. Hold up. Go Puncher hasn't Surely made anything not. to kill a Void Ray. He didn't Surely actually not. make the things required. He's going straight Surely into the Twilight not. Council. This is also only a battery and not a cannon. He thinks it's going to be a proxy oracle of all things for some reason. So we can just target to, this battery. We are making we a need single to stalker. The battery. Okay. We're making a single stalker to deal with this, which also is not enough. Go Puncher's going to lose. He very well may lose. He's dead. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's Jover, as, as oh the kids say. Oh my God! Do we have a probe? We don't have a probe across the map still. <laughs> I thought maybe we could expand oh, to our opponents. But, oh, but there's two no. void rays. It's just never enough. Oh, goat puncher. Oh. Oh, oh it's so sad. Goat puncher. Well, oh no. He had it. He uh, had everything. He. Completely won with the cannons. He had the follow-up transition in time, but he just didn't do anything with the transition. The cannon, yeah. the, the forge, and the cyber was done so ahead of time. We could have had a yeah. battery and cannon and like two stalkers finished by the time these void rays walked mm -hmm. into the main. I mean, we scouted that the thing is on the bottom left here, but uh, 
yeah. one stalker. So oh, he does have enough. He does have enough minerals to make a nexus, though. You know? Is something here? So that is true. So uh, he could technically still camp behind these cannons for a little bit, but unfortunately, there's nothing let actually me, defending the minerals or the nexus from the void rays. Yeah, uh, let me suggest a circumstance to you, Gemini, which is that if you look, actually, there's an interesting feature about this map, which is that if you look to the uh, right side of the main base, you will notice that there's a bunch of just like sort of uh, fucking nothing there. And void rays are units uh, which can fly. And what I might suggest to Breddy is that he fly those void rays over that nothingness to the Nexus and then blast it down with laser beams. <laughs> it's a great idea to be honest with you. And I mean, there's three of them right here that could do just that. The Stalker amazingly did so much damage there with the, uh, onto the probes. It killed seven of them, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, and unfortunately for Go Puncher, he can't actually afford to cancel this Nexus and then remake it again. Amazingly, these Void Rex are actually running into the cannons, which is very funny. And they're gonna do it again, and we're gonna lose one of them. Okay, okay, so Bull, okay, like you were losing, saying... We're losing flying units to buildings. This is not <laughs> ideal. Oh my God. But there's another Void Ray on the way. He can't do any mining. I mean, we're we're Magnath levels of cope right now. Yeah, there's it's, no uh, way. It's Jover. There's it's no Jover. way. Yeah, that is that. Unfortunate for Go Puncher, as he absolutely had this in his clutches, but... Yeah, that's unlucky. Brady will take the first game in the series. Very nicely done. It's uh, it's a little unfortunate that it went that way for Goat Puncher, uh, but on the bright side, on the bright side, I do think that we will at least get half of my prediction, and that Goat Puncher will still pick Oceanborn as the loser's map pick, and then just cannon rush again. Yeah, <laughs> Oceanborn is the pick. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> dang. Yeah. Bull with the mind reads, Very funny. and by mind by mind read, I mean just saying the most obvious thing, which is that a cannon rushing player will just do the most obvious thing every single <laughs> time. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you, by the way. Smile for the raid. I appreciate it. Welcome, everybody. We're doing the ATL Season 3. This is the All Things for Us Team League. It is the sickest team league of all time. It's uh, a community-run team league for the Discord of the All Things Protoss here, and uh, we are in the final week of the regular season here which is uh, super sick, so I hope you guys enjoy. This is the Pool 3, right? This is Pool 3? Yeah, Pool 3 match, which is uh, the whole league is set up into different pools to have oops, equal amounts of MMR for each match so lower league players can still play and not get dumpstered by GMs and stuff. So this is the Diamond 1 or so range of uh, MMR. And yeah, that's, that's, that's what I got. Welcome, everybody. Go ahead, you can so choose true. Players. Also, oh, okay. let me just say, in the bottom right, yeah. playing in the dark green, for May the Forge be with you, the cringiest thing of all time is happening where this man, this Finn, has picked a cannon rush map and is not cannon rushing after cannon rushing game one. It is. Goat Puncher. And in the top left, in the pink, still not using the correct color, I believe. Yes. It is trying to 2-0 a cannon rushing piece of shit like Go Puncher. The man, the myth, the legend? Perhaps it is. Bready. <laughs> nice, nice. I, I thought about going caster chicken there and just seeing how Dude, long I could be silent. Been, <laughs> that would have been amazing if you did. Because <laughs> I would have held it. I would have held that until you fucking oh, said it and zoomed in. There would have been a blink stalker fight happening in the middle of the map, <laughs> and we're still looking at Bready's main base at minute like eight and a half. That would be the greatest content, dude. You should have fucking. You should have held it. Oh my god. I'm imagining what I'm imagining is uh Karathos uh in the highlight video for yeah. this week 
just speeding up through the whole thing and slowly zooming in on the minimap and timer to highlight all of the things <laughs> happening around the map <laughs> with just the little box of the observer uh, screen sitting patiently <laughs> over Breddy's main base. Oh, that'd be so funny. All right, so uh, we do have a two gate opener from both. Like we said, there's not a cannon rush happening on the best cannon rush map here uh, from Go Puncher. I would have at least liked if he faked a cannon rush because I think that would get massive amounts of response and would have been actually mm -hmm. very good. Uh, I so agree. a bit unfortunate that Go Puncher did not quite lean into the uh, mind games that could have really benefited him here in the second game. But regardless, he will yeah. be going for a. Uh, a four stalker opener with a much later nexus, which uh, is interesting. I'm not quite sure what exactly happened here to get him such having a late nexus. Did Breddy just go two gate or two uh, two units and then expand without going for the extra? Sure did. Them? Okay. Uh, also, it's worth noting here that uh, just a little bit of insider baseball for the chat. If you look at this chat where it looks like Goat Puncher uh, had to pause here, uh, I actually happen to know why he had to pause there. What happened? Uh, was that uh, Allerton was observing these games, and when he saw uh, that Goat Puncher wasn't cannon rushing on Oceanborn, uh, the best cannon rush map, he uh, actually voice called him in Discord and just started screeching at him, <laughs> and it was just too loud for him to uh, to focus on the game and play at the same time. So he had to pause and uh, close Discord because uh, Allerton's just absolutely unhinged uh, screeching in the background was just uh, a little bit a little bit too much to deal with. Nice, yes, good good background in front of now. Uh, we are currently oversaturated at 26 out of 16 on our main base here with two missing in each of the gas geysers, interestingly enough, from so Bill Puncher, true. with the latest Nexus of all time. And then we also recalled three of our stalkers to deal with a hallucinated mm -hmm. Oracle that mm -hmm. already flew itself past our base without attacking so anything. So, so true. Um, Yes, not not the greatest opener we can say here from Go Puncher, I think. Yep. What's what's also very funny is that Ghost Puncher actually saw that hallucinated oracle moving across the map. Um <laughs> and he should obviously know that if you see uh two stalkers and two sentries that there's not actually a f like it's not possible to have an oracle out that fast. Um Yeah. And I'm worried that he's going to see this hallucinated Archon and also overreact to that. <laughs> and think, he's, oh, charged shit. All, he's charged on Archon all letting me fuck. I got a wall oh, off my, my natural. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not ideal. Also worth noting, Goat Butcher does not have a battery in his natural. Well, the other more um, important thing is that uh, he doesn't have detection versus the DTs that are about to end the game, actually. So true, actually. Um, we do have a robo that is going up that GG. luckily is powered by three pylons, but uh, GG. yeah, it's it's not ideal. I will say that. It is not GG. ideal. What the fuck? GG. We do need to pull the probes from the natural, and we're doing that kind of. And we do need to probe... Oh, uh, goat puncher. Oh, uh, goat puncher. GG. Goat puncher. Uh, GG. Um, you know... You know, it's times like this that I'm reminded of uh, of something my grandpa used to tell me uh, when I was just a little bull. He used to put me on his knee and say to me, Bull, life is hard, but it's even harder when you're stupid. And boy, <laughs> oh boy, are you stupid. Because we had all the tools. We had all the tools to make this work, but from the recall, uh, from the, for some reason, really, really fast plus one weapons, it, it just, it, I mean, what are we, we have six gateways in the top <laughs> right side of the map, Goat Puncher. What is happening? Amazingly, okay. he's up 10 army supplies. I was supply. going to say, I, actually, this army is kind of scary. He's got a prism, too. With plus one, and I there's mean, only one battery at this third base. If if he gets surrounded, I, Goat Puncher, don't make me believe. No don't way, make me no believe. way, right? There is an observer to deal with the Zealot as well. We do have the overcharge though, so that's gonna help oh, out yeah, a yeah, lot. We're, we're fighting in range of battery yeah, overcharge. That's not that's ideal. That's not it. That is not it. We're that and DT we're like lasted for, of, forever. 
we're like kind of targeting the battery, but then like switching off of targeting the battery. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, it's. We're and attacking then we just don't kill everything. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. Yep. All right. That oh, was... go puncher. Yep. 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 GG. Well. Uh, you know, they say you can't win them all, but unfortunately for Go Puncher, you can't win any of them. So uh, he gets O2'd. Yes, yes. That was... What's the, uh, what's the copy pasta with the, uh, like, I'm so glad for something because he can't win anything or something like that? Like, oh, my mom left me, my grandfather left me or something like that, but like... So is that what it is? It's like, but I'm no, so, no, 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 no. My, think, my, uh, my, my dad used to beat me. My mom used oh, to beat me. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's why sure. I'm thankful for Go Puncher because yes. he can't beat anyone. Thank you, Bull. Thank you. Yes. Very also, good. can I just point out that that is a joke that has been around for decades, but you are so zoomer pilled that you call it a copy pasta. <laughs> it, it is a copy pot. Like what? <laughs> I mean, that started as like a joke for like sports teams. And to talk sure. about like you know them being so shit. I just think it's so funny that jokes because they make their way onto the internet and get you know co like pasted it, around. It's that they a copy pasta. You copy can pasta. call it a copy pasta. That is the that is the way that we have consumed it the most of recent late of recent times. The last fourteen years of my life. So it's that a would, copy that pasta. Would be, All right. That would that, be like the when, medium uh, when... in which I have seen it the most. That would be like if someone's like, uh, yeah, my name's William, but my ID is Bill. <laughs> Do you mean nickname? No, I mean my ID. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go back to the desk to see what they thought about that incredible series, which was uh, very interesting for sure. Uh, November and character, hello. November, your thoughts on the cannon rush and then the terrible defense of the DT all in. Well, not even all First in. First, I want to give my thoughts on... Uh... Your conversation with Bull, you know. Funny story, back in the day when I was actually playing StarCraft, like, uh, uh, I, you know, we, you know, I had my clan leader, of course, uh, you know, I'm sure you know who that is, you know, but uh, we were watching a regular sports game, watching soccer, actually, and then we were watching for like about 10 minutes, and then suddenly my clan leader goes, wow, these casters are really good. Now, I want to ask you, do you see anything strange with that, sent with that statement? I'm sorry, like, well, I, I wasn't paying attention. I, 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 I wasn't paying attention to a word you just said. Character, okay, hi. No. What did you think of the series? Shut up. No, you need to answer the question for me, okay? Wait, so, there was a question in there? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, character. The, the, the cannon rush was extremely well done in the first game, uh, but unfortunately uh, the second game not really doing it. What, what do you think? Well, the first game, I think, like, uh, the transition was just a little late, so, you know, nothing to deal with the Void Ray is what it is. Uh, the second game, no obs. What else is there to say? No obs. It, it's the same analysis as, like, the, the Sewer Badger game, where a bunch of DTs got warped into his base and no <laughs> obs. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was really unfortunate that, that, yeah. that Go Puncher honestly had all of the possible tools and both games to solve all the problems at, that were coming at him, but he just forgot to do them. <laughs> I mean, I, I should look back. Games, no? I, I should look back through all the PVPs and like see how many of the lower pool games end by no obs. For real though, it's actually I, so many. Few. It's so many. The <laughs> amount of times I feel like I've seen DTs killing people at these low pool games is insane. Like, just just make a fucking robo You'll see it next or cannons week when early I forget to make my obs. It's for real, like it's yeah. insane. Oh my god. Yeah, honest. We thought we thought we, we thought cannons were OP, but we forgot about true OP units, void race and DTs. So true. It's insane actually. And of course, the most overpowered unit, the observer, you know, because <laughs> they help you to and never mind. But they Anyways. don't even attack! Wow, do you ever build and, units? Yeah, but they detect. Attack, they you know? they prevent the game from immediately being lost. That's why they're so. By broken. the way, yeah, I was you... gonna say I I don't watch a lot of cannon rush games, but that reminded me of like uh, a cannon rush that was done on in some GSL. It was like Turbo Cruise. Yep, yep. yep like yep. where there was a cannon rush like that. I like, knew you were I gonna it was talk, say that map as well. Yeah, I forget who like who it was, but I'm pretty sure it was a PVP. It was classic. Pretty sure. Actually, no, I think Classic did it with a proxy, like, Stargate or something. Uh, but regardless, yes, uh, those types of low ground into high ground ones off the side are also very potent, been around for quite a while as well. 
I remember having that happen to me on Metalopolis. I'm Luolus this week, apparently. Uh, anyways, so... Yeah, and right. this... Remember Jared's flooding to CC? Holy shit, good times, good times. Agreed. Our next match is going to be... Uh, Luola, speaking of the devil, uh, versus Patches. I actually totally forgot he was playing second. Nice. Uh, so we're going to have our our resident Wings of Liberty man playing against Patches here uh, in the second match. What are we expecting here, Mr. November? Well, Klaus and I were very OP in Wings of Liberty, if I can remember correctly, but that was like 10 years ago, so I don't know. So I'm going to go for Luola, you know. Easy to well. That analysis didn't make any sense, but sure. <laughs> Character, what do you think? I'm sure it'll make more sense. Well, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, Luolus has been canon rushing lately, right? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. but he, he did lose his challenge, so I think he's he's gone off of it now. So you don't? Okay. Well, uh, I guess he won't canon rush then. I was going to say, I, uh, I was going to say, like, maybe he canon rushes twice, he loses both games, and then he starts coping. I don't uh, know. You wouldn't canon rush a Terran. They have broken range units. They should really just start just do it anyway. I mean, listen, you're the top team in the group. You've got a hundred percent chance to advance. And the last week, you've got a three Protoss lineup, and you're the Cannon Rush team. Why would you not Cannon Rush six times for the meme? Yeah. I'm just saying. Because they're already fucking ruined it. Great. But, yeah. No Cannon okay. Rush in game two. I don't know. Anyways, uh, sorry, I had the you match score wrong, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I had the match score wrong on the on the screen. Sorry, I had it. It was 1-1. One, one. It is 2-0 for low skill, so sorry about that. Yeah. Um, but, yes, okay, we're going to be going into the next game here for Luola's Patches. I'll be back with you guys in a little bit as I join with my co-caster, Mr. Bull Mjolja. Welcome back as we're getting ready for the best match hopefully of the day because i love just watching luolus play because it's really fun to make fun of him so true and it's it's honestly it's quite fortunate that we have me on the cast because i think that you know of all the of all the people who could be here on this desk right now uh i think we have we've also picked the two most appropriate people for a luolus game because just as he is thinking the entire time, oh, this is just like uh, the GSL in 2011, uh, I will know exactly the players and games that he's talking about because I am also <laughs> a bit of a StarCraft boomer. So when he says something like, oh, this is actually a build that I learned from watching uh, uh, Team H play in Pro League, it was actually really good. Now, he lost the game and it wasn't even fucking close, but from a strategic perspective it was really fucking good <laughs> and i'll and i'll go oh yeah teammate uh, those guys sucked ass and he'll go no you don't understand they're actually so good that that's actually a very good finnish accent hey thank you very much i've been practicing uh, quite a bit quite a bit nice uh nice. yeah also uh, i don't know if uh, luolus knows this or not but uh, patches is uh, a little bit of a mech enjoyer in this matchup a little bit Ooh. of an all-inner in Ooh. this matchup Cringe. and uh you know mech is not very strong against protoss on paper but its greatest strength is when it matches up against a player who's just not super familiar with what your response is supposed <gasps> to be um and i would imagine that luolus probably has less experience with it than most uh so it could be quite advantageous for oh matches my god he barely missed the scout on that hit in barracks that's insane he was one yeah, pixel away from uh, saying that. That's not ideal. That is definitely not ideal. Also, interesting that Patches pulled away those STVs from mining in order to uh, try to get that probe. Yeah, because yeah. Because he, totally he knows he's not cannon rushing. He knows he's not cannon rushing because he scouted so early. Uh, so there's not really a reason to do it because you're probably not going to get it. Also worth noting that Patches uh, has three barracks on the map, but not nearly enough gas to use them so i'm a little curious i mean i guess he got his second gas late because he didn't want it to get scouted but at that point why not just make a one base wall off to prevent it 
Um, I, mean, I don't know. A little interesting. It, it just makes it look like it's doing something. Actually, never mind. I don't know. I, I yeah. agree with you. That's that's kind of weird. Uh, what I've also find weird is that Luellis, while doing a totally normal build, went for the earliest second pylon of all time in his main base, yes. and then yes. isn't doing anything with that, and just got a third pylon anyway. So I don't yeah. actually think he knows how to do a normal opener as Protoss, which is kind of funny. Uh, and he's as he's now getting a robo here too, which actually will help him because it is going to be a proxied factory with cyclones. Uh, so if he just gets a battery at the low ground here, uh, since he did scout that it is going to be a f uh, double gas opener, it would help out a lot, I think, to just throw down a super quick battery. Uh, this is a little unfortunate. Yeah, we, we definitely need the battery. It Cyclones in a normal build hit the field out of a reactor at 315, and that's across the map. It's 320, and there's already three Reapers and a Cyclone at the front. Um, if you do not have the battery here, you just it's such an unnecessary risk. You just die in so many games where you don't need to, and I think we're about to see that, to be honest. Yeah, it's just really, there's just no reason to not just throw down a safety battery if you see two mm -hmm. gas. Like, there's just literally so many possibilities that can get thrown at you. So we were making fun of I'm Data the other week about not making batteries. And the funny thing is about this as well is that the person that was with me making fun of him for not making those batteries was in fact the person now dying from not making any of the batteries. So it's really just irony at its finest right here as Lillis is now just seeing the death of what he was preaching about a couple weeks ago. So. Oh really my god, you know, you know what this is just like. This is just like Tails, GSL 2011. <laughs> he also didn't make a single shield battery in any of his games that season. So and it really true. makes you think, what was going through his head? It just, was he stupid? I don't know. Yeah, is he, is he stupid? I think he might be. Like, that just goes to show how low skill Wings of Liberty was. The Tails didn't even attempt to make a shield battery, let alone actually finish one. So true. Um, uh, kind of the only evidence you need that gamers are better now than they've ever been and that anyone who was good in Wings of Liberty was only the beneficiary of a weak, diluted, and ultimately uh, intellectually disabled class of pro gamer that could never stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of a King Cobra or maybe an Ashbringer today. Yeah, that's what I know for sure. Interestingly enough that Lulus actually did kind of sort of defend with the Immortal coming out and Patches didn't feel safe enough diving and then going for any more kills here. So uh, Lulus actually isn't dead yet, which is incredible. There's still no battery down, which is also hilarious, but he actually doesn't quite need one anymore, I think, as the, uh, the Immortal being out really makes this a lot better for him, but uh, okay, it was... Going a bit poor. Sick force field. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was going to help against those Reapers for sure. But unfortunately, they will be able to kill some of these Stalkers and get on through. So uh, I guess still not the worst thing in the world for him. But it That's is still true. getting a little bit sketchy, I would say, for Patches. As his natural CC only just landed. His stim only just started. I don't really like that this tank is being made. Or, well, I don't actually mind that it's being made. But I don't like that it's just sitting here. I kind of wish he will just send it home and make sure he doesn't die to anything weird. Although now the Reaper's getting in because Lowell is completely out of position is really, really bad. So surely a couple probes are oh, going to get killed Lola's. off here. And that is not what he needs right now after already losing so many and finally getting himself back into kind of a stable-ish position will knock him right back down to nearly equal probe counts here. As uh, Patches will be feeling pretty happy about that little run by and the the the... The, the Reaper is getting sacrificed for more than just absolutely scouting and information and nothing else. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, we're we're going to probably just die here, I would imagine, to this uh, follow-up push. The, the reason being that, um, you know, a couple of Immortals, if we had them by now, would be nice for these tanks. But realistically, uh, you just absolutely cannot, with this sort of half wall that is uh, that is present at the natural, you cannot move in and out to pick off units um, with this SimCity against tanks. You need charge or something like that, or blink to delay this. Uh, oh my god, I just... have no idea. Ugh. Oh also, god. Luolus should have known that it was a proxy factory based on how fast that uh, Cyclone got to his base. He probably just does not know the timings of yeah. Cyclones hitting the field in this matchup, which is interesting considering he is a Terran player. But <laughs> uh, this is not the worst start of all time. But I'm just nervous oh. that, oof, we don't exactly get that tank as cleanly as we could have, should have. 
Uh, I, I think he's still going to get run over here. Super battery is based, but we need to pull this immortal back. Yeah, it's too late. It's too late, gamers. We are witnessing the slow death of a Finnish man, and uh, not in real life like the way he always threatens, <laughs> but unfortunately <laughs> for him, it is all Jover now. Yeah, there's definitely no way he's going to be holding this one, I feel like. I mean, this is going to be so many tanks and marines sitting below his main base here, and not even sitting as he's going to just run Oof. right on in. The force field doesn't land, and everything is going to be dying. Uh, Luolus, unfortunately, will not be finding a game one victory as the probes actually do get a nice couple surrounding kills on the Marines since they're such low health. There's no medevacs on the field. Uh, but yeah, there's literally going to be one Colossus and nothing else to defend against this. Finland loses again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with the pro pull, actually, it does kind of kill quite a few things, but yeah, it's not going to matter. JG as Lou Olis says grats instead. Was an interesting one. A new uh, new uh, one to add to the, the books here for Lou Olis as he continues to never GG in any of his extremely, games. Extremely low test behavior from Lou Olis, unfortunately. Yes. He literally just cannot find a way to, to say GG to his opponent. He always has to find some amount of sarcastic way. First it was the GG in quotes. This time it's a congrats. <laughs> Uh, also, can can we just appreciate that this is the kind of bullshit Terran build that Luolus himself would do in this matchup, and yeah, he's yeah. still upset? <laughs> yeah. You fool, you're supposed to make clocked banshees with these. <laughs> after after you'd go for six hellions out of your factory. <laughs> you didn't even have supply depots at your proxy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I mean, this is now really bad, though, for uh, May the Forge be with you. They have to win every single map from this point on to get to the ace match. This is uh, looking extremely dire for them all of a sudden. The, the front runner of this group is getting absolutely blasted so far in this final, uh, final match of the season. Honestly, not what I was expecting coming into this one. Uh, so true, but it does make my team look better, so I am <laughs> all for it. <laughs> It's amazing when when the actual good cannon rushers aren't cannon rushing in the in the the match. How the game actually looks, or how the match actually looks. Hmm. I say. What could be the cause of that? Mm. <laughs> so curious. All right. In the oh my, top it. left. Sorry. Wallace, could you could you not for five seconds? In the top left, it is the what is this periwinkle? <laughs> Anyways, it's, it's the light, Terran player. Is it gray? I think. Like, what, what, no, this is like, uh, this is like, uh, this is like violet almost. I don't know what this is. Anyways, Luolus is cannon rushing on Ghost River. Extremely cringe behavior, but I don't blame him because he got absolutely turbo blasted in that last game. Uh, wait, this isn't going to work, right? Surely not. Patches. Patches. Okay, no, he's sending one to the low ground. Okay, that's very good. You do need to block that cannon spot, although the SCV is not in the right place. Oh, he's uh -oh. blocking like a fucking uh -oh. nexus from being uh -oh. I don't know what that patrol path was. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Patches, just like Larimbo in last season, does not know the limits on where town hall buildings can be placed, <laughs> and so he tries to block a nexus in a spot that it can't even be built, and now he is paying the price. That was a sick reference. I totally forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, that was awesome. ATP old heads will remember a classic <laughs> moment in ATL history where Larimbo learns where hatcheries can be built. Um, I, I think this is going to work. I, I mean, it just it looks bad right now, to be honest. It looks quite bad for Patches. Um, uh, I mean, we're going to get this Marine out, and so we should be able to get this Pylon. Get the pylon patches. There we go. Uh, we should also be building a depot, by the way, on the right side to deny high ground uh, from this probe. But the depot on the left dies anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we also definitely, definitely, definitely need to kill this cannon. There we go. Okay. And in the top right, it is the dark green player playing for me. The forge be with you. It is Luolus. Uh, okay. Not even um, close. I think realistically, <laughs> I think patches can still hold this. I absolutely believe in Luolus' ability to throw this game away. But also, um, this is a pretty good start. We do not have any more units being built right now because we are going two add-ons on the barracks. So our ability to deal with this, and we're going, wait, Tech Lab first? No, you need to get something out of this factory, Patches. Oh my uh, god. 
Oh. He the didn't zone. know how supply blocked he was. Okay. Uh, yeah, we were very, very, very supply blocked there. We're going to get this pylon, but the Zealot can still provide high ground just so that these cannons can't be killed for free by the Marines. Yeah. Um, we do go Cyclone first. I would have preferred to see a tank in this situation, given that I know everything about what's happening in this game. <laughs> I think he's probably worried about a Stargate uh, being on the low ground here, which is fair. But obviously, in this situation, the tank would have been better, for sure. Um, we are getting combat shields first. A little curious about that choice. Um, I would have liked to have seen, honestly, uh, maybe concussive shells and marauders. Again, I know that it's not Stargate, so it's easier for me to say, that, obviously. Um, we do lose high ground. That's not ideal. I... I mean, is he gonna throw it this easily? I, I, I don't really feel like we are dead just yet. As the stalkers should be out here now, we're still gonna be having a robo coming out. Like you said, there's no tank just yet. Finally, okay, just now getting that tank. now, which is very critical here for patches yeah. because otherwise the Willis will kind of just have free reign of continuing to take high ground vision here on top of this ramp. Uh, he's going for warp gate as well back at home to be able to continually warp in units uh, once the gateway switches on up here too. Some decent little micro here with the shield battery to try yeah, and we do need poke to down repair the cyclone. the cyclone. We do we do need to to make sure the cyclone does not die. It does represent a pretty significant amount of DPS, obviously, and is very versatile. Uh, the tank comes down, but I'm worried he's just going to walk up and kill it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I think Patches is now dead. Uh, it, it feels incredibly tough um, to come back from the situation. I mean, Marines with Combat Shield, I guess, are nice, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. It does feel like this is uh, this is the end for our boy Patches here. We're not even making another tank either. We started stim yeah. in favor of another tank when we are getting Oof. absolutely micro-diffed right now because we just cannot get on top of these units. Three cannons still alive here as well. Unfortunately, losing the Stalker, and this Immortal is also pretty low, but the barrier gets put down, so that's also very nice. We're also standing mm. in the range of cannons, and the second Big Daddy Immortal spawning right at the same time should spell the end here for Patches, as there's absolutely nothing in his main base that can possibly deal with this. Even a Widow Mine being made of all this from Patches, as he's in absolute shambles, and the first map getting put onto the board here for Luolus and May the Forge be with you. They are still alive. It's still possible to actually swing this one back. Uh, I think we can we can all agree that the biggest thing that we take away from that series is that uh, Patches, Patches is a better guy than Luolus because he got dumpstered on Ghost River by a cannon rush proxy robo built, and he said GG. <laughs> so 2-0 Patches in this series. Unfortunately, May the Forge be with you. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely loses the entire thing. We don't even need to watch the rest of the games. Congratulations <laughs> to Itty Bitty Banana Committee, the undisputed number one team in the league. Yeah, 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 you wish. All right, let's go to the desk and hear for, for sure what is going to be some of the worst analysis I've ever heard and potentially not even talking about the game. So let's go ahead and do that as we get our thoughts from these people. Hello, Analyst, uh, excuse me, analyst desk. Welcome back, uh, character. I'm starting with you, so that way November can't go on a random tangent about something Are that doesn't we? matter. Oh. Uh, so, oh. character, what did you think about those two games? So, I like how we didn't build a battery on the low ground, and then when we did build a battery on the low ground, we never fought in battery range. And then when we <laughs> did, it's because we lost our entire army, and there was one immortal left. So, we obviously now we overcharge the battery. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, was not yeah. really the greatest from Luolus, not going to lie. And it's then... Crazy uh, how, uh, go on. Oh, sorry, I actually go on. Oh, oh we got it's two crazy how, like, the, 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 yeah, the one game that uh, Forge uh, makes cannons, you know, they win, so... Yeah, no, I, true. I don't want to say, you know, that there's a trend here, but, you know, there's a trend, you know. Although, Guitar, or, uh, go, go Puncher did lose the first game with cannons, so... Technically, that was a I theoretical agree. win, though, because he should have won that. He had the tools yeah, already yeah, to do yeah. that. So that was yeah, a theoretical no. win, see, which is the best. Battle battle aces. Aces. Sorry, yes. I if it was that, battle I aces that. and if, the, that, if his opponent was Artosis, then that was absolutely a win for sure. But unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, so, yeah, not exactly the best situation by, uh, by that. But regardless, it was an interesting series. Uh, the next one is going to be 
Also Wait, kind of interesting. I, oh, sorry. Did you have something else to say about the... Oh, I was going to say, I do actually have uh, something to say about the second game. So, yeah. like, Patches lost his first depot, and he didn't even make a second one for, like, 30 yeah. seconds or something ridiculous. So it's like, it just really hampered his ability to actually make units to deal with the cannon rush. And then we just lost the tank. It was Jover. Yeah, that was <laughs> pretty like brutal. Said, uh, theoretically, Terran players are the best at holding cannon rush. So you have all the tools, you know, lift off, repair ranged units, you know, bunkers, like tanks, whatever. But they never get the cannon rush. They don't know how to, they don't know how to <laughs> play the game against it. They just, yeah. Yeah, they just like assume no. that they'll be able to defend it because they do have just the best fucking well-equipped race to do with it. And then they just die to it because they don't know what to do with those tools. Yeah, exactly. It's funny. You know, this reminds yeah, me of GSL in 2011 when, <laughs> I don't know. I just... Yeah, no, it's fine. I guess it was a good attempt. <laughs> Uh, but yes, the final match here potentially is going to be Raptus versus Ibery, something that I'm also a bit excited for because I uh, haven't actually seen Raptus at all play. He's a newcomer to the ATL, so it's always cool when we get newcomers on the stream. Unfortunately, it's all the way in the last week that we finally saw him uh, of the main regular season, but the Forge will be with you will be going on into the final uh, decider match and potentially in the playoffs as well, so we will be seeing more of him. Uh, but it's still cool, of course, to get new players from the uh, from the league being casted here so i'm very curious about how he will be doing here against ibery in a pvz in november what do you think i think it's absolutely hilarious that uh what is going with this? oh yeah uh that you never casted uh forge and that's why we're only seeing this player late but uh, actually, i actually don't want more else going with this at all yeah do you want character i will try to remember what i'm gonna say <laughs> uh so uh I guess what I was Fuck going you, to say Gemini. is, um, so doesn't, um, uh, shit, I forgot the player's name, sorry. This is going amazingly, everybody. <laughs> no, no, I'm no, so wait, glad wait, wait. that we I all did, can have, have remember what we're going to say. say. <laughs> we're all goldfish wait. brains and don't know what the fuck is happening. Okay, this is perfect okay, okay. and excellent. Doesn't, uh, doesn't EB Re in PVZ mostly just go like Roach Hydra into Lurker? Because I'm pretty sure that's generally what he does, and I think that's what he did versus Echo last week. I, or, I, wait, I didn't see the, 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 the side stream match, so I'm actually not sure. But I'm pretty sure that that's what he did versus Echo last week, and that's generally the way he plays, so I pro expect a pretty standard game out of EB Re, unless he's prepped some sort of cheese for this week. Um, Raptus, I, uh, I remember looking at some of his games, but the only two games I remember were PVTs, where he went like... Uh, four gate blank i think and then he also did like a double proxy robo so it i uh, it seems like like he leans towards the aggressive side i don't exactly know what he does in pvz but uh maybe he'll do some like two base charge lot all in or something i do not know but uh, it does seem so like he might favor something aggressive so if he plays anything like he does in pvt you know, yeah. he did say, uh... Go ahead. He, he leaned for more aggressive flint slant. That's not how I would phrase it. He seems like a cheesy motherfucker, okay? Which means, uh, I love cheesy motherfuckers. Okay. Well, yeah, so, I mean, but the thing is, I didn't look at game, enough okay? games. I didn't look at enough games to say for sure if all he does is cheese. And he did do a four-gate blink, which is, you know, it's aggressive, but it's not a cheese. So, yeah, that's I why agree. I just chose to say aggressive he does seem to be doing pretty well overall in the season though because yeah. he's actually one of only three players that is lossless in the uh, at the moment i've just looked at the stats yeah. him jackie and takwa are all 4-0 and no other player in the league has uh no losses other than those three players so raptus is apparently cooking on the side streams and whatnot yeah. that i have not seen so i'm very curious to see how he does here do we expect him to go 6-0 from now on here a character a 100 percent you know I feel like my predictions November. right so far have been like entirely wrong. So 100 percent wrap is gonna go six zero because that's that's a hype thing to say, but you know. Sure. Keep in mind that November. It's gonna go five one. one. It's gonna go five okay. one shit. Shit. I right. you know, I just gotta be contrary. No, I just I just gotta say the opposite uh prediction. Yeah. Just so we have our bases covered. That's totally fine. I well, not that. the opposite, but whatever. You know what I mean. Exactly. Yeah. 
All right, thank you guys. I'll be back with you in a little bit. I'm going to go over to the caster desk with Bull Mulja to see what he has to say, of course, as we go into this next game, as I have escaped the analyst desk and joined you on the caster desk for this final series. I'm very excited. You know, I was uh, actually most excited for this match, not just because of the gameplay, but because uh, on the most recent cast uh, of this team, uh, on the B stream, on the Bull stream, I mistakenly, mistakenly identified Ra uh, Raptus as Lithuanian. I, I saw this when in the chat. <laughs> he is in fact Latvian, and uh, so uh, as a result, I will be spending this entire cast uh, googling things about Latvia and becoming a <laughs> Latvian nationalist in order to restore the honor of the greatest country on earth, uh, greatest country on earth, the Republic of Latvia, which is a country in the Baltic region of Northern Europe. Uh, one of three Baltic states, along with Estonia and Lithuania to the south. Uh, truly, truly my favorite country on earth ever since it was first recognized internationally on January 26th, 1921. <laughs> a thing that I know just intuitively and did not look up on Wikipedia. Because it doesn't Wikipedia exist there. A, it's on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, also, Raptus is a little bit um, Raptus is a little bit traumatized from the last time that I identified him as Lithuanian after he made an L patrol path in his opponent's main and is instead in the top left going for some kind of giant C which <laughs> I can only assume Hold, it's a secret message. What is he saying? L I C think, I think this stands for cuck as in bull you're a cuck for thinking i'm lithuanian <laughs> it's absolutely what it is that's actually really it's, funny because at, like yeah. while you were getting ready to say that in my mind i was trying to spell out luolus cuck <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why we so both, true i don't know why so we both true, thought the c was that <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so it's going to be Ibery versus Raptus here. It's going to be interesting. We already have a three hatch before pool from Ibery, mm -hmm. something from also 2011 GSL, actually. Uh, so honestly, the last time we've seen it is also at that time because we figured out that this is actually a terrible build that doesn't actually do anything. And uh, literally going just normal openers is, is just better. This doesn't actually give you any benefit. Unless, yes, unless he does this, which is the fake yes. three hatch uh, supposed macro build into a slow Ling Flood, which is the stupidest fucking build of all time, but it actually sometimes works. I was just going to say that uh, Raptus will actually see all of these Lings, though. Okay, I'm not sure why we didn't kill that probe. We should have killed that probe. Yeah, we uh, need it to only he is send gonna two see out. A, he is going to see a giga shitload of Zerglings, and for some reason... Raptus is moving the adept across now. Okay, he does pull it back. Uh, we need to put that in the wall. Raptus, we need to put that adept in the wall. What? Raptus, we need to put that adept in the wall. Ra oh no. What? Congratulations to Ibery for winning map one. Oh no. I mean, the second adept is gonna get out, but I, I mean, at this point, does it even, okay, we need to kill that uh, pylon though, for sure. Uh, yeah, the adept gets surrounded on the left side outside the wall. We're gonna lose the one in the main. Um, I just, I don't even know what to say. Pool four, baby! I'm blown away. Do you have some sort of statistic about how like the Latvian like president got assassinated or something? You know, I feel like that you know would be what is so funny? I right actually, now. I actually was just about to say, isn't it so funny? This is almost an exact replica of the kind of thing that you see uh, from the left-wing opposition party, the Harmony Center, which is supported <laughs> by Latvians' Russian-speaking minority. Uh, because in 2019, the election-ruling center-right coalition got 63 out of 100 parliamentary seats, and no one expected the left-leaning coalition to get any seats at all. But in a very dramatic swing, they won 29 of the 100. And just like I didn't expect... Uh, anything to happen from this slow ass ling flood that is an absolute jank build. Ibri somehow pulled it off. That was awesome. Such Thank you. is the cruel twist of fate that all Latvians know too well. Or so it has been explained to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, uh, we saw the lings coming across with the probe literally as early as humanly possible. Yep. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we were obviously reacting back at home with like making a wall and things like that, not making probes. And uh, yeah, I mean, the adept just it 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 did it, it was that was I guess that was Luolus. Like he mm -hmm. just wanted to die. I don't I don't even know what else to say. By the way, I totally didn't. I, I forgot to mention because the game was so funny, but. Uh, someone subscribed a while ago. Question Monkey subscribed with their own fucking money. So thank you so much. This wasn't a Dine Common gifted sub uh, this time. This was actually someone using their own money to subscribe because they apparently like the channel. So thank you very much for doing that. You're very appreciated. Uh, and I hope you didn't leave already. Uh, and, and are now regretting <laughs> spending that $6 on a streamer that doesn't acknowledge your existence. But... Uh, also, thank you to, to Waffles to gifting to Karathos, which is also super based, as he's the one that makes so many of these awesome things. So, uh, thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the win there for Low Skill Apologists, 4 to 1. But we'll see, of course, if there ends up being a, another map win here. Uh, I am here, but I don't like the channel. I miss Clint's fuck. <laughs> oh, oh, Christian Monkey. You Damn are it. so based. God you damn are it. so based. It's also worth noting that Question Monkey <laughs> does not follow the stream. That's is so what based. I'm seeing on my I'm seeing on my side Question Monkey does not follow. This is the most based person to ever live. That's excellent. That's super sick. I'm so happy. I, I almost want to give him VIP for that. That's actually so funny. Yeah, I feel like this guy this guy's kinda gotcha. I think this guy this guy deserves it. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Uh, this is like that guy that, uh, that baited me into saying that what I was doing in game was like wrong and that he had a better response. And then he like trolled me for so long about it. And then even to the point of sending me a shitty ass replay that he played with the mm -hmm. worst response ever. Did you see this for like a long time ago? This happened to me. And I like, he, I only realized after the replay that he was trolling me the whole time. And it was actually the most legendary thing of all time. So, uh, that is, yeah. that is truly, that is truly legendary. I think this is, you know what this, that reminds me of actually another legendary fact, which is that, did you know that Latvia ranks <laughs> first in Europe in the percentage of leading positions, which are held by women? I think that's incredible. The world bank consistently ranks Latvia first in the world in women's rights. I just have to throw a shout out to one of the ba most based countries on earth, Latvia, the country that the player in the top left, Raptus, is from. Fun fact. I, that is a thing Thank that you. I know and have always known. I would never mistake him for one of the inferior Baltic countries, Lithuania. Yes, and of course that information was given to us by the lovely Liquipedia, not Wikipedia. So true, so true. <laughs> As uh, it seems like Avery, the guy on the other side of the map, is actually going for a early pool gas shenanigans here. So, some uh, potentially more tricky builds up his sleeve to be thrown at the uh, mm -hmm. at the Latvian over here. So, we'll see so if true. there's any type of uh, adepts continuing to not be in the walls and stuff like that moving forward. And unfortunately, Raptus is actually overreacting to this mm -hmm. build as well. Unfortunately, not quite identifying that it's not actually a super early pool first, but it's a slightly later pool first yes. into a later all-in, which means going for a full-on uh, delay of the Nexus and a Chrono Zealot and everything makes it worse because you don't actually need to do any of this. So you can true. actually just expand like normal and then do a response of what will be happening next. Yes, and, and just for all the the pool four gamers out here, you know, this probe is really your secret. The, the probe is going to be able to tell you exactly when the Zerglings are coming out, right? So you don't need to do something like this where you waste a chrono on the Zealot. You can make the Zealot. That's perfectly fine. But you really do not need to delay the expansion this much. Um, giving it a little bit of respect by just getting the Cybercore down first is also fine in case there's some kind of follow-up all in, which is what is happening. It is the Roaches. But he, I am afraid he's going to overreact to the potential of the Ling Flood and underreact to the Roach all in, which is what's actually yep. coming here. And that will ultimately be the biggest danger. Um, we do need to definitely get tech down uh, immediately. Also, batteries. Uh, but this this Stalker is going to come <gasps> out here. Dude, it's these Lings. Game it should not there. die. Oh, Raptus. Oh, Sorry. Raptus, please. Please do not throw oh, this why is game he chasing away. Him? Why is he chasing uh, him? 
He saw gas being mined. Of course, Ling Speed is surely going to be done soon here, right? Dude, this what is... What are we this doing is, with this stalker? What is happening? Why are we uh, sending this, this across is, the map? God, this is just like in 2009 when in Latvia the price of real estate increased by 250%. Oh my god, it's creating such a bubble that we're just not going to be able to contain and I'm afraid we're going to die. Oh, Raptus. Oh, these oh, fucking roaches it's all and ravagers, Jover, man. Dude. It's Jover. We don't have time to get this Void Ray out. Are you kidding me? We don't even have the minerals. Why are we making probes? Wrap this. Okay, he cancels the probes to make the Void Ray. But we just, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. Amazingly, the, all the, the links. Yeah, amazingly, <laughs> he just body blocked his own links. That's actually hilarious. The game would have ended right there. That's actually going to have a little bit of time to get the wall off up. Hold yeah, up. This Wait is, a second. Okay. Wait a second. There's a battery finished, and this Void Ray is going to get out. There's a lot of pylons on these things as well. He uses the bios onto the battery here, which is not a bad play, but he could have gotten two pylons for that. The Void Ray is actually going to get out here. This is a full-on wall. There's only two Ravagers to actually throw out bios. Wait a second. Holy right shit. Right here. Don't tell this me. Is, this is just like Latvia's residence by investment program, which was Shut designed in 2010 <laughs> to attract <laughs> foreign investors oh, to a struggling no. economy. Oh my God, is he doing it? We need to overcharge. We need to overcharge eventually here. Oh, wrap this, please. Please overcharge. Overcharge. There it is. Oh, it's too late to save that stalker, but I think he might be able to do it. Am I coping or are we about to save the country of Latvia and therefore the world? Oh my god, the second Void Ray has hit the field. I can't believe it. I cannot believe. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the oh fucking shit, Ravager dude. Morph. It literally oh lost in the game. Shit, dude. It literally oh lost in it. He was oh about to god, flood dude. with all of the lings and get us around on everything, and he body dude, blocks them. The, listen, listen. That <laughs> Ravager blocking all of the lings. Shut is up. almost Shut a shot-for-shot shot remake Shut of the time the that Kenneth up. Orchard noted in Moody's Investor Services analysis of <laughs> Latvia that the strengthening regional economy of Latvian production and exports is in fact bringing the balance of the internal devaluation of the currency back into check. Holy shit. It is truly, truly one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. And on the back end of all this as well, we actually have drones being made from Ibri as they don't feel like they've lost the game, or maybe they do, but they don't quite want to believe it just yet, as they are now trying to recoup from those losses of the all-in, but there is quite literally nothing here to defend against a couple Gaitois units and a couple Voitras, and that is going to be the end of these two queens. Unfortunately, Raptus couldn't get this win in the first game to make it a little bit more interesting, but it will be the second at least to get another map score here for may the forge be with you to fully solidify themselves as the first in pool or sorry uh group a i should say yeah this was uh this was just a classic hold uh from raptus um <laughs> you know i i think i think obviously he was extremely concerned he was very panicked when he realized that he had misread the situation that it was not a ling all in and was in fact a roach all in um but i think you reached deep into the bag through the history of all great Protoss players uh, and realize that much like Latvian folklore, which goes back a thousand <laughs> years and has over 1.3 million identified texts, that there are countless examples of Protoss players leaning on the history of their Protoss brethren to clutch out the defense. Uh, truly, truly a great moment, not only for Protoss players, not only for Latvians, but if I may be so bold, all the world. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't really listening because I just gave Question Monkey a VIP, not only for the first thing that just happened, but also for this second comment in chat, which says the second point ray has hit the tower. <laughs> that is the funniest wow. fucking thing I've ever wow. seen. <laughs> I am cry I'm actually crying from laughing that that, that is so, so funny. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just going to let him get this out, chat. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Holy shit, that was so funny. <laughs> oh my god, okay. All right, By the way, if any, if any mainstream casters with a large audience would like to co-cast this league uh, where Gemini okay. spends 45 seconds laughing at 9-11 jokes, <laughs> please, please get in contact with us. We are desperate and we will do anything except rein in our absolutely degenerate oh. behaviors. <laughs> Okay, all right. Let's go over to the desk. All right, actually, I'm sorry, Bull. You're. This is the last time we're seeing you here today. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. You can give any final shout outs or thoughts. Uh, thank you for joining me on the cast. We've always appreciated it. Sure. Uh, yeah, happy to be here as always. Uh, glad that I got to cast uh, a couple of really great series. Not only, first of all, let me just point out uh, what what a banger this was that we see Frogify clutching it out in order to keep the playoff dreams alive. They are still counting on the Itty Bitty Banana Committee to come through for them, but as of right now, they are alive. Uh, and we also see the first loss of the season of May the Forge Be With You, uh, meaning that IBBC does have the chance to go into that undisputed number one spot. Um, ultimately, though, I think you know this was just a good, a good day of games. Uh, really filled me with a lot of joy. Um, almost as much joy as it does for me to know that uh, Latvia's biodiversity is some of the highest in the world with more than 35,000 species of flora and fauna that have been registered across the country. Um, my favorite, if I had to pick one, uh, the Eurasian beaver. I thought you were going to make a joke about how nope, much enjoyment nope, I get it. from 9-11 jokes. <laughs> nope, that's it. That's all. I just I just wanted to say uh, uh, shout out to the Eurasian beaver, uh, scientific name, Castor Fiber. That is uh, not a joke. Excellent. All right. Thanks for having me, Gemini. Of course. Thank you, Bull, as always. Let's go over to the analyst desk now to get their final thoughts as well on the series, as it was a 4-2 victory here for Low Skill Apologists. Which is uh, very good for them, of course, actually. If I look quickly back at the standings uh, to confirm what exactly is going on here, because I forget. Uh, that does put them at a 2-3 and up their map score a little bit here as well. So, uh, provided that the United States of Protoss end up losing and the Goobers also end up losing, we could actually be seeing the low-skill apologists uh, coming out into third place at the end of all of this and finding a yeah. spot in the deciding match, which would be pretty sick for them. Uh, character, or November, sure whoever wants to talk, yes, uh, go ahead. Let's I'm go not exactly sure how lefty that is right now, because I'm looking at the results, and I don't think they have the head-to-heads against uh, Kitty Cabal and Goobers. I might be looking at that incorrectly, because I'm looking at a matrix instead of at the it's actual standings, which would be better. But Well, well map score comes only, ahead uh, of head-to-head, -head, so... Yeah, of course. But um, let me go over it. But yeah, Los Paul just would have a map score of zero after this. And we know United States Protoss is a minus six and Kitty is a minus three. So that does put them in a decent spot. It's just, you know, I don't know what I wrote here. So I haven't had 11.72. I don't know. Anyways, but uh, I will run my code again while character talks and we'll see what happens. Sure. Character, right. your thoughts about the series? Oh, this is just a great desk today, guys. I don't even... <laughs> what is happening? Oh, my God. Is hello, he even here? Mr. What happened? Hello? Character, uh, hello? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Right, well, Holy shit. Running, so did he fall asleep in the mean. middle of it? Like, did... <laughs> I know it's early well, for him. Last, like, <laughs> so the game did last about 10 minutes, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second so, sleep. Uh, <laughs> so my code has run. Low scale apologist oh, is actually at eleven point seven. Oh, never mind. I didn't run it correctly. Ignore me. Okay. <laughs> Characters right, make us broken. Better... November is doing analysis that's wrong. This is great. I am honest. I think I'm gonna call this because this is getting super hey, cursed. Hey, hey. Dude, dude, stop. Like, give me, give me uh, 10 seconds, okay? All right, can I get it now? No, oh, there he is. Right, Fuck, right, God damn it. Yeah. I simply uh, unplugged it and plugged it back in again, so. That's great, okay. Problem solved. Go ahead, talk. I was going to say, did you know that Arthur Silovs is a Latvian professional ice hockey goaltender for the Vancouver Canucks? Okay, uh, I guess Thank that you. was funny. I, I tried. Um, I... 
but yeah, that was um, it was a pretty good uh, series for the low skill apologists. I think it gives them a pretty good chance to come back into the thing, but I don't know exactly what score they'd need to uh, to win. I think like USP would have to lose next week in order for them to get into playoffs, but uh, it obviously November is running the numbers, so I guess we'll get to know that shortly. Um, thoughts on the game? Uh, I put your shit in the wall. This is like the first thing you learn as Protoss. Uh, okay, I don't I'll run the numbers. Oh, sick. So, the numbers have been crunched. Yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. So, uh... The United States of Protoss is still at 50%, which pretty much just means if they win, they're in, if they lose, they're out. <laughs> okay. Which is a uh, intri very interesting analysis, but I will say, Goober is actually the best bot <laughs> with going into finishing up finishing thing, but if if United States of Protoss loses, then as long as they win, they're in. And Low Skill Plus and Kidia are tied for being the worst, but they still have a chance. Nice. All right. Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting that, yeah, I guess... My favorite boss is actually Estonia, because I'm actually a big fan of Riga. Wait, Riga's in Estonia, right? I, I'm I, not good at geography. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a mafia! Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, I, uh... I thought it was happening in Estonia. Nice. Anyways, we are going to be wrapping this up here, as it's been going a bit... Uh, I don't know what's happening. So, thank you guys for joining me here on the desk. Uh, we will be... Uh, ending it. Character, any final thoughts here on this wonderful analyst desk that it's been surely just one of the best analyst desks I think we've ever had so far this season? Obviously. You have, uh, you know, totally not random tangents about uh, nothing. Uh, you've got the best analysis, didn't put stuff in wall, didn't make obs, didn't make battery. That's basically the analysis summed up in three words each. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go to sleep for, like, three to five hours, play Sewer Badger for next week's match, and, uh, thanks for having me on, despite my terrible analysis, uh, but, he, l listen, when nobody signs up, this is what you get, so the lesson here is, sign up for the goddamn analyst desk, or you're gonna get me, this is a threat. So true. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, I, thanks for having me on yeah. anyway. Thank you, of course. I will yeah. try to do better next time if I remember to actually do uh, match prep for the. No, it's my own fine, team, so you know it'd be even worse if I didn't. You're good, dude. Don't worry. We're just trolling in all in all the end of it. So no, uh, no, yeah, it's all good. November, your final thoughts here on the desk. Apparently, someone has spent twenty three dollars on my credit card, which I do not know about. So I'm gonna figure that out afterwards. But uh, <laughs> going back to the character's point about you know I'm doing a bad job and not showing the gun, do not worry about that. I did a terrible job. I will see you all next week. I will do even worse that time. I'll be even more incoherent <laughs> and say even go on even more random tangents. And I will see you all next week. And he will come up with more facts about lad. <laughs> Excellent. That's super awesome. I can't wait to see that. I'll. I, I don't even know what to say. Thank you, guys. I will I, see I you later. Uh, enjoy the rest of the games tomorrow and all that good stuff. Goodbye. Bye. Great. All right. I finally managed to get off that fucking tragedy, just like how there's another... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, anyways, four to two here for the Low Skill Apologists over May the Forge be with you. Uh, we will be ending it right there and uh, be done with everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed the wonderful <laughs> matches today uh the wonderful situate i i can't even talk anymore i'm just that last joke just absolutely killed me <laughs> so hard i just i i just can't my brain's mush thank you guys for watching i'm gonna raid someone and uh we'll be back tomorrow for another match of the uh the all things brought us team league so yeah that's all i got see you guys later